robotic delivery on her gets away with a disperse. Some damage on the best stone shield prevents almost all of the fearless right Shadow King juking real. The real can't find the head. Shadow King still alive. Black, he's fighting for his life. He's fighting for the champion. He's fighting for everything he's standing Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 56 of the Smite Update. My name is Octane Pro, and as always, I am joined by my co-hosts Fats and F Dot. How's it going, gentlemen? It's, it's a Sunday. <laughs> it's a Sunday. I had to be breathing, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> entertaining evening, entertaining tournament weekend. Yeah. Just uh, it's a good old Sunday. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty, how's it going? Uh, it's going rather well. Yes, I am a little sleepy. Uh, last night I went. Last night I mm -hmm. went out for uh, Mr. Jeff Hindler. I went uh, Jeff Hindela. I went to Jeff Hindela's <laughs> birthday party. Um, okay. He actually turned 21, so it was rather exciting. Wow. He came all the way up from Brooklyn. Uh, we went out to out east to Jeff Hindela's house, and it was a lot of fun. Sweet, sweet. That's awesome. Uh, and how far is that from you? Uh, Jeff Hindela lives about 40 minutes from me. Oh, it's not bad. Sweet, sweet. Well, good deal. Well, outside of that, I'll uh, throw it over to Fats first. What have you been up to this week in Smite? Um, yesterday I played the PTS. How'd that go for dope. you? It was dope. It was dope? No. Wait, no, that was, that was two days ago. Okay. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> played Friday! Actually, actually, that's, that's interesting. That, that's something, um, we can, we can bring up. How... Do I get on the PTS, Fats? Why don't you tell our less fortunate people how, how that works? Um, in the Smite Game chat, do exclamation point PTS, and bam, instructions. Bump my mic louder? Yeah, whatever you do. Done. I don't know. Done. I don't know how there it is. technological stuff. We'll deal with that. That sounds much better. Much better. Yeah, Smuggling Rub, New York for the You should have came out, Smuggling. <laughs> you should have came out. We had a lot of fun, and... We we can tell. We can tell. We, we had a lot of fun. It was a good time. Uh, I actually... It was it was funny, so... I don't know if you... Um, I don't know if you're familiar with how... So, Jeff Hindler's name isn't actually Jeff Hindler. Yeah, that's the what? best story. What? What? <laughs> yeah, if you look on if you look on Jeff's Twitter, you can see that he's actually like Rosario. That's his name, Rosario. Okay. okay. What a baller first name. So <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> it so, really is. So Jeff. So Jeff Hindler. The name Jeff Hindler came from his friend. Is named Jeff Hindler. And when he installed the game, he had no plans on being pro. And he was like, man, I don't know what my name should be. And he was like, yo, F you. I'll make my name Jeff Hindler. <laughs> and his friend Jeff Hindler is a very, like, uh, who would I compare Jeff Hindler to? Like, his, <laughs> This is so weird. His friend Jeff Hindler is very, like, oh, my God. Why are you doing oh, that? Oh, really? That voice? Oh, my God. That voice? Like, he's just really? your generic, like, Whiny white guy that complains a lot and look wears oh. boat shoes like that. Like to be fair, he's he's like a fun guy, but like yeah. that's what he does. That's his gimmick. It's a lot of fun, and so like clearly I understood immediately why Jeff Hindler <laughs> chose to choose Jeff Hindler as the namesake. Yeah, for sure. And wow. so he introduces us, and he's like, "Oh, like how do you know Rosario?" And I was like, "Oh, from Smite." He's like, "I hate you. I want nothing to do with this. I am not. I am the real Jeff Hindler." <laughs> That's it awesome. Hilarious. It was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. You should have came, Octane, bro. I would have. I would have. Fridge of milk. Oh, oh, I hate you. You know, you know, as long. I know, comment. <laughs> you know, <sighs> I was away on vacation the past four days, so I have not touched the PTS. I have wow. Watched, I've watched a lot of Smite. I know, I got a little red going on here. I was on the beach the last four days, so. Uh, I was enjoying I see a little it. Beard coming in too. Yeah, like, that's, nice. that's the. I I needed to get out. You know, oh we left goodness. early. This is, see, you see, and, like, and, see the and, octane stubble. And you want to know something what? scary? You ready? This is what real men happen. You know, when real men don't shave for a day, this is what happens, boys. You know. 
Did he You're just try to, to slander... a guy with a full beard? <laughs> Did he just try to slander yeah, me? That took you about that took you about a month to grow that stubble left dot. Come on, Alex. Is, is he really talking? Is, is this all <laughs> slander in my direction? Because I think that's what this is. Oh wait, yeah, you shaved last night, Fat. Did you wake up and realize that you shaved? <laughs> no, I didn't go to sleep yet. <laughs> oh boy, wow. I feel. Why do you think than... I look like this? <laughs> Actually, to be completely honest with you, you look shining and you look. Yeah, rather you don't good look. To me. Yep, you look fine. You look like normal like, fats. You look. You look rather good. You can I pull that one off. I numbers for like five hours. Oh, I watched exactly what? Why. Numbers. Numbers, oh, has numbers has a good, really no, good show. Oh, numbers high. Best show ever. Yeah, that's a really, really good is. show. Make I'm on season three and living the dream. So uh, this past week for me, I had the opportunity to interview David Fry. That was awesome. Uh, really cool oh, guy. Cool. He, those of you guys not familiar, he's the owner of, co uh, co-owner, should I say, majority owner, I guess is the proper term, of uh, Cognitive Gaming. Um, so if you guys want to check out that full interview, uh, the YouTube link is directly below on this overlay, youtube.com slash the smite update. Go check that out. There's a lot to learn about um, the business side of esports, about running a competitive team. Uh, how Cognitive got started, um, and the main reason why they actually picked up Cognitive Gaming Red. So pretty cool. And we'll get into that a little bit more talking about them as we get into our esports section. Uh, but before we jump in to our community news, I want to remind you guys this is available on iTunes and Android Store. So if you guys want to check out the audio-only version, it is available. So make sure that you guys do go ahead and check that out. Just go to iTunes, search Smite. Uh, you'll find the show, Smite Update, and uh, same thing on Android. So please go check it out. So let's so before go we for move it. into anything do it. a little more do serious. It. What do you got? I uh, have something really quick. Okay, please share. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that you have some facial hair, mm -hmm. Patrick. Okay. So no, your old no. Your name was Octane Pro. Yeah, yeah. Now, Octane Grow! <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do this show? <laughs> yes, this I agree. This is just not my level of humor. So, that was so fat, sad. This is Fats just sitting in the corner saying, Octane, no! <laughs> I hate you. Are I we, hate are, you. Are we going too fast for you, Fats? Would you rather us I know, go right? Octane, Octane slow! slow! <laughs> oh, God. You know, next time, when it's about to start, just let me know when you're ready to Octane go. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? Don't worry. Because man. I like wanna... the choice to say Octane, no. Mm. I case. won't even. I won't even make it rain. I'll just make it octane snow. Isn't that awful? You are like just telegraph everything you're saying. <laughs> Trash boys. All right, ladies. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump in here. Community news for this week. Uh, first thing, um, pretty big deal, uh, without a doubt. Um, Gabe went ahead and announced the 50% off sale on all pre-released gems, and. Nope, uh, nope. I know for sure, and I'll throw the link in chat if you guys want to read more about it. Um, so, did you guys pick up any skins that you were kind of holding off on getting, but you know, once they dropped down to a quite lower price? F dot, what'd you grab, bro? You're all excited, like, dude. I grab I so I grabbed a lot of the gods that like I play like the gods that I play a lot. I have their skins, yeah, mm -hmm. and then I also happen to have I also happen to have. Hercules and mm -hmm. on her okay from like back in the day when I was level one and wanted to play <laughs> those characters and like have a bat yeah so uh, I went out and I got like man I had I had a couple of gems on my account from something else okay but like still didn't want to just like use them all sure because, sure you know Ram I'm the same America, way Mecha Fenrir tons of cool stuff coming out we all know how high res like mm-hmm I, I, I sound like I'm putting on an advertisement. There's plenty of stuff for me to slander high res on, but when it comes to skins <laughs> and <laughs> art and stuff, life. like they just win. Yeah. Like I'm so sorry. Great. Like I would totally poop on them, but there's just no room to poop on them for this in, in this category. They're just awesome. It's but I went out skins and I, are stupid and they're great. <laughs> no, high res but, makes great skins. Quality high skins high and the fact that they're willing to, you know, hey, we're going to slash all the prices on these old things because everything that's new that we made is 50 million times better. So we get <laughs> this old stuff for the low. Like, it's such knows? it's such a marketing play. It's like, all right, we're going to put 50% off a week before we go ahead and release all these badass skins. So everyone's going to spend all their gems. And then, oh, yep. they're going to spend oh, more yeah. gems because of the fact that's of true. we're going to release all these sweet ones. So, uh, Fats, did you pick up any at all this weekend that you didn't have? I already previously? had all the skins. You already had, you all, had of all of them? Yeah. Not everybody. All of them? Not everybody. My game streamer. Not oh! every. 
Oh, you have Mr. Big Man. I am a Smite game streamer as well, Fats. What's your time slot, buddy? Uh, Sunday is from <laughs> 5 o'clock to 7, all right? You can oh, okay. Here. So we're going to see you play some Smite? Good, because I need to learn how to feed in the jungle anyway. Oh. No, I actually, I actually feed in the long lane these days. I've been playing for Really? Look at, really? Look, look at you. Really? Look at you. Who are you favoring lately? Uh, so like Apollo, like obviously, but uh, outside yeah, of, of Apollo, I destroy nerds with Uller. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, easy mode. Like, that's easy mode man. rotation, go. He's the man. He's he the is. Man. He's really Problem good. Problem being is we need like how the, I don't want to start this conversation yet. All right, so here's what I do with Uller. I want to go in. I buy Uller. I buy Transcendence a hundred percent of the time. You're kind of crap. <laughs> Cause you, cause, no, no, no. Because what you do is. I know. I know what you do. Trust me, you, I know. You clear the wave with the one, you stun him, you hit him with the three in basics, and they're like, oh, he didn't kill me, ha ha. And then you do it a second time, and they're like, oh, he killed me, no. And it's great. It's Why do you time. sound like a. The, I know. Worst sound like a smurf. It's like a ever. smurf. A <laughs> smurf? Where are my smurf berries? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yo, so I was playing with TV the other. No, 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 no. I was playing with Shadow the other day. All right. Yeah. Um, Crappy was... Shadow. Whoa, oh whoa, Shadow's my guy, all right? No, 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 okay, you tell your story, I'll tell you mine. Shadow's my favorite member of the Juice Crew. That's fine. I'm your favorite person <laughs> in the Smite community. What up? No, right? that's not true. All right, my I'm number four. Person, so, but, oh, like, over, so my favorite person is probably, I like Jeff Hinla. Mm. I like, let me just look at the everybody not but. Hey, oh, wait, I'm going to just wait for him to say some random name so I have a reason to get pissed. Just wait I like, for it. I like Jeff, I like, I like Octane Grow. I like Aww. Octane. There it is. That was it. That was it. That was it. <laughs> Impossible. I like, I like the Buddha 13. I like Chris P722. Middle. Nice job reading the chat, buddy. I know, right? Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. And then I guess you land somewhere after those guys. Cool. But. Cool. So, <laughs> moving on, keeping this going. I feel like I'm on The View right now with a bunch of older ladies. You two are ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, no idea if, what if you're you talking talk about. about. Old ladies. I mean, that milk you had last week might have been spoiled. Are we done? Are we done? All right, moving on. <laughs> Community news. Uh, as a reminder, every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, we do have Pug Wednesday. So if you are a player that's looking to move away from maybe some of the solo queue or looking to start scrimming with some people, show up. Uh, it's 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. It is on the Community Mumble. I'll put the link in chat. And, uh, you know, play with Hi-Rez, APC, and Kelly. I know sometimes FDOT checks that out as well. I know Kret makes an appearance every once in a while. So there's a link in chat. Enjoy it, uh, without a doubt. Uh, moving Those on. actually mad fun. Yeah? Yeah, I haven't tried it yeah, yet. Like, I, I'm, I'm like, like, looking forward to trying it out Wednesday. Honestly, dude, just show up. Yeah. Like, I know you're bad, but it's totally oh, good. We don't really, word. like... My word. But on a serious Love note, hate for, relationship for, like, those people, right here, for those people right out there here. that, like want to play but oh it's so bad like sure. it totally doesn't matter it's yep. it's more akin to like playing pool with your friends yeah perfect. like perfect. is it fun to be good totally mm -hmm. but when you lose like you know we might be like haha you lost but nobody really cares it's kind of yeah. just like you know adam like high res apc runs an esports league and mm -hmm. you know kelly plays on stream for thousands of people to like critique her we all come together on wednesdays to like just have fun yeah and it's you know it's it's in no way shape or form is it private but it's not broadcast to thousands yeah. of people yep. so it's just a little more like colloquial and chilling and like you know i always just pick hercules jungle to make kelly mad oh my word <laughs> that is actually my 100 percent oldest interaction with the smite community when i first downloaded with smite bugs. i was playing for about a week okay and i started watching the streams and I saw like Kelly, Kelly playing and Bart playing and stuff. And like our, I basically exclusively played casuals. I hit thirty. I continue to exclusively play casuals. Mm. And my Elip, my casual MMR, or whatever, got high, and I just kept playing with Kelly. Okay. And one time I played with Kelly. I don't know if she recognized my name yet or not, but I, I played as Hercules. Okay. She, like I was just a rando. I played Hercules Jungle. I was like, this is gonna be fun. And she's like. In lobby chat, she's like, "Man, <laughs> these jungles not gonna BM, work." I was, BM. Like, I was like, "I was like, no, trust. I'm gonna make it work." She's like, trust. "It's just not gonna work, but maybe like whatever. Let's see, man." Yeah. And I proceeded to go zero and seven. Well, and did nice. you did you get the wrath of Kelly afterwards? And she was just like, "No, Kelly was mad sweet, but she was like, see, man, 
I told you Hercules Jungle's not going to work. And like three games later, I got in her game again. I called Jungle, and she's like, don't do it. And I locked in Hercules. <laughs> and like I said, the I was ultimate random. Troll. The ultimate she had no troll. idea who I was. That's and I was like, awesome. I'm going to make it work this time. And this time I went Heartseeker and went 0-10. Oh, God. <laughs> and, uh... You're that guy. 100% <laughs> that guy. And, like, I remember that. But, like, you know, I don't know if she remembered that originally. And, and we got to pug in months ago. And I... And I, we, we were on a team. I picked Hercules Jungle, and she was like, "You." <laughs> she remembered. That would have been awesome. I remember you in the mountains. <laughs> like that's awesome. That is my first interaction with the Swag community. Of course, it's a troll interaction. Of right? course, of course. So <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and move into our uh, new section of the community news. Uh, last week, we kind of made a shout out and, and reached out to the community and said, "Listen, you know, let's start getting some uh, emails from the community." And I didn't. These guys don't have the access to the mailbox. I got to give it to, access to it. Oh, but great. I probably got 130, 140 emails. From all over the world. It was awesome. We got emails from people from Argentina and Finland and Thailand. It was awesome. That were people were like, I, I, it was awesome. It was awesome. And they were just like, love your show. And then they gave some great questions. So we have a handful of questions here from uh, four people uh, that we'll kind of go ahead and talk about. Uh, instead, of, instead of doing the community type of questions at the end of the show with Ask.fm, I thought we'd do some emails. Um, Get a little bit more. If you guys are looking to email the show, uh, please go ahead and do so. The info is directly below the webcams. And uh, we'll sift through them and find some of the questions that we think will be good for the show. Maybe stuff we haven't covered in a while. Some, some really good questions that you know, um, we haven't gotten. And also some basic questions that maybe some people just haven't thought about yet that maybe some of our new players are interested in. So I'll throw it over to uh, FDOT first. FDOT, if you want to go ahead and uh, take question number one, read it off. That'd be awesome. I don't know how to read. Okay. Illiterate, huh? No, I got you. You're from New York. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Rip. I got Rip. You. Uh, let's see. Um, the first question we have in our mailbox came from Rybik with two Vs. Two. And that question was, on this past week you talked about shot calling. Uh, that brings up two questions for me. Is there a specific role that makes it a better shot caller or just anybody? And what do I do and or what does it take to become a good shot caller? So I'll take part of this one first, uh, just because if you remember la last week, yeah, last week we had Woofy on and we were yes. just, we were discussing shot calling. So if you guys are interested in shot calling a little bit more than what we'll discuss from a professional perspective, Woofy talked about it last week a lot and he pointed out how Dignitas has really turned themselves around over the past few months because of Zapman and being one of the best shot callers out there. Um, which was kind of interesting because that man is very much in that hunter role and we're seeing him be very successful in it. I mean, if you guys mm -hmm. have been keeping an eye on Dignitas since the launch tournament, they've been doing really, really well. Uh, what are your guys thoughts on it specifically? Is there a specific role that you guys notice is perfect and what makes a good shot caller just from your experience? Support works well. Mm -hmm. Support will be the one to actually notice where wards are more than anybody else because they'll be focusing on their lane opponents more than the map presence and their map control. Mm -hmm. um, I just watched uh, Juice play a little bit in the Iron Gaming League okay. tournament, and they playing it's DM TV Purified, Cret. and Cret. then Cret wow. and uh, Peckies, hmm. and Peckies is a support, and the calls he's making are so perfect right now. Like they had a team fight over on the left side of the jungle when they're on the. Uh, Blue side. Okay. So they called for a Gold Fury because he noticed there were no wards there. They got the Gold Fury. Great call right there. Mm -hmm. Got another fight. Same side of the map. Left side. Fire Giant. Like, do you think support it's... has that extra vision of the game? However, anybody could possibly do it as yeah. long as you're able to pay attention to your map. Yeah, yeah. I feel like support I... is is really good actually, <laughs> just because the way support is a very different mindset. I feel like than the rest it of the is. players that you're playing with. Um, you know, so I feel like with support, you're, you're very much playing aggressive to a degree, but most of that, you're very much watching the map, you know, watching your ward placement. Uh, so you have a lot of vision on what you're seeing. And there is a lot of, I don't want to say like dull time, but there is a lot of rinse and repeat as a support. So I can see that as a, as a pretty valuable aspect for a shot caller. What do you think there, FDOT? You were, you were starting to say something. Um, shot, so I, I feel like the, the, uh, the, the best 
shot calling position, if everybody on the team has equal skill to be a leader, mm -hmm. is the jungle. Because mm, you are okay. the most mobile and you create situate you have the ability to create things to happen. Mm, sure, that's, that's not ev that's not in every jungler's capacity. We know that DM Brandon or, uh, we know that DJ Pernicus mm. tends to play more of a, a waiter than a creator in the jungle. Okay. He sort of plays solo lane jungle. Um, but in general, a jungler is generally the person that goes, I choose to gank middle or solo. You choose to change where the action happens in the game. Okay. You are one of the more mobile people, obviously sort of tied with support, but less so. So you mm -hmm. can be everywhere. You can notice wards like exactly what Fats was saying, but... You know, players tend to be more uh, cerebral-minded in the support role. Hmm. You're 100% right. Yeah, I like it. So, so, and actually, that was one of the interesting things. Once upon a time, we saw Dignitas try out Zapman in the jungle, Laz's in the hunter role. Hmm. And the, the overwhelming majority of the reasoning behind that was Zapman was the shot caller and could do so better from the jungle. Hmm. It didn't work out. Zapman was a good jungler, and Lazz's was actually a very good hunter. But at the end of the day, Zapman wasn't Lazz's, and Lazz's <laughs> wasn't Zapman. You know, you yeah. don't you don't take you don't take Michael Jordan and tell him to go play baseball. Like oh, we what? saw that in what? Space Jam. <laughs> you know, we saw what happens in Space Jam when Michael Jordan plays something else. So, oh. you, know, you, you gotta you know you gotta stick to your guns. But at the end of the day, I think jungle. Jungle is probably the best position to be a shot caller in. However, the individual matters a lot more than the position. Hunter is arguably the worst role to be a shot caller in. Hmm. But hmm. Zapman is one of the better shot callers, specifically for his team. So it just works out because he's, it, you, from, from uh, an intelligence standpoint, like he knows how the game works. He can figure yeah. out where the strategies are going to be so it works out for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, but he doesn't have that mobility. He's just good at what he does. So. Yeah, that would be a good question. I know every once in a while we have a sub on to, to fill in for one of our hosts. And I think that would be a good question to bring up in the future. Like if Fats or Dot or myself can't make it, just to ask. Because, you know, and get different perspectives. I mean, Wolfie gave his perspective. Uh, but it would be, it'd be interesting to see, you know. I mean, you guys have Barracuda on the one time too as well. And Jeff Hindala and stuff. So I'd be eager to see, you know, uh, and, and find out a little bit more about that. Uh, moving on to our second question. I'll go ahead and take this one. This one is from Ash. Says, since the Warrior nerfs, Guardians have come back into play, which is great. Except instead of the Sobek, Athena, Bacchus reign that once happened, Geb Kuma, and Kumakarna are now dominating the scene, which is rather interesting. Both have unique parts of their kit, but what makes them a priority over the traditional Sobek, Athena, Bacchus, and other Guardians? I'll throw this one to you first, Fats. What do you think? Okay, what does Sobek do? A toss. And... Okay, and how do you stop a toss? <laughs> beads. No, no. Or... What, what, what? Beads or yep. Geb shield. Geb shield. Yep. yep. There you go. So that's done. Mm -hmm. How do you stop a taunt? Geb shield. Shield. <laughs> Is there a pattern how do you going stop, on here? Uh, well, you know, Bella. how do you stop the channeling of the longest forever taken stun uh, in the game? Anything. <laughs> Anything. Yep. Yep. So if you have a character who has a five years five year miss, mm -hmm. um, and another character who has great mobility, a uh, great stunning ultimate that does percent base damage, mm. and yeah. a knock up to stop channels, and a shield that stops everything, why not just pick them? Yeah, I mean they're kids. Priority for a reason because. Sobek's main, the main thing that made Sobek so good is a fling. Mm -hmm. And the idea that he can put you in a position you know you don't want to be in, so he has that lane pressure and that lane control over you and makes you not want to stand in certain places. That means you can't farm effectively because he's just standing in your way and he'll just fling you to your death. Well, now you have a Gem next to you, so if Sobek tries to fling you, and because of how it works, he charges you for that stun first and then a fling, so the stun yeah. hits you. Then Geb pops a shield on you, so there's no flank. Mm. That's it. Yeah, especially especially too, because a lot of players I see will, will it, it creates a bar, large problem with Sobek for sure if they miss that. If they miss that tossing that backwards, you know, it, it's you're like, okay, what now? What do you have left with Sobek? And I think just as you had pointed out, like the kits right now for Geb and Kuma Karna 
are amazing. They have so much utility in them. They have a lot that, you know, not all the other Guardians have. And I think that's really what makes them a priority right now when you're looking at picks. But they're also a priority when it comes down to the bands, you know, when it comes down to it without a doubt. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily count Bacchus out. I mean, Bacchus is definitely one of those situational ones. But Bacchus, Bacchus is still very, 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 very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it also comes down to your game modes, too. I mean, if you, you know, in 5 versus 5, you know, you might see Geb and Kumakarno, you know, maybe getting picked up prior to. But if you look at other game modes like 3 versus 3, for example, Fats can definitely tell you myself, like, Bacchus is amazing. He's a great pickup. Um, but so is so is also when you see Geb and uh, you know, Kumakarna banned out. He's a, he's great. He's a great option to have. So it really comes down to your, the game mode for sure. If you're basing this strictly off of conquest, uh, I can agree that those two guardians are definitely uh, a more of a priority. What do you think, F dot? Anything else? <clears throat> um, with guardians, I actually feel like guardians are definitely really close to each other. Um, yeah, more so than the warrior guardian disparity. Yeah. Geb, so Geb and Geb and Kumakarna can be boiled down to a single point in that they have large AoE control. Mm, um, yes. Mm -hmm. Kumakarna mez, mezzes you. Actually, they just nerfed it. Instead of mezzing you for 20 years, it's now mm. just 10 years. <laughs> no, no, wrong, wrong, wrong. It's only 19 years and nothing <laughs> <laughs> they went from a score to a decade. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, right? Um, you got an extra know, and, month and, to live. Part of that is balanced because, like, it's a mess. You get hit and you're out of it. Yeah. But uh, I think that Sobek is still very good so long as you're not against Geb. Mm -hmm. Athena is just as good as Geb and um, Kumba. Maybe not. So, so Kumba Karna is sort of very slightly on his own tier. It's not in yes. the sense that pick Kumba every game, but you probably should. It's not in the sense that pick Kumba every game, he's just better than everybody. Yeah. But he, his kit, he's got self knock up immunity, an AoE root, an AoE mez, and something to take somebody out. It just, it screams support. Hmm. Sort of what was, sort of what Sun Wukong did. He sort of defines the, uh, sort of defines the support role. So there's that. Um, but outside of Kumba Karna, and like I said, the other Guardians are rather close. Geb, the shield is very, very, very important and very powerful. Mm -hmm. But so is an Athena taunt and the ability to rotate to the other side of the map. It's just a different style of play. So if you have, if you have Geb shields to toss out, you can be the ultimate Guardian. Mm -hmm. And you can Cataclysm people, which is sort of a setup. But yeah. if you're playing Athena, you can save your teammate from the other side of the map and you can taunt... And set your team up for things like Al Quang ults, etc. Yeah, it makes sense. Best set up in the game. Yeah, each guardian has their own specific thing they bring to a team exactly. fight or so any like situation. That's why their kits are different. But the thing is, these two are so prioritized because of what they're able to bring to the team over what the others are able to do. Athena could jump on you, but if you die before she drops down, <laughs> it's an ultimate. Yeah. And Athena basically... can taunt somebody, but if you know somebody else is there. You're probably not going to enjoy that. Like, the one thing people tend to forget about Athena is her passive block, mm -hmm. which I think is the most ridiculous passive. It's so good. It's so good <laughs> because you essentially block three auto attacks, which mm -hmm. means you can body block three shots, which is no damage, and you're a tank. So that's an extra three you can block to protect somebody. Problem being is... Um, if you try and set stuff up, then here's the other support to tell you to shut up with a yawn, <laughs> or cut that out with a shield, yeah. or even stop moving with a uh, knock-up. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think Kumba, Kumba Pumba is sort of on his own plateau. Yeah. Not necessarily something gigundo, but, you know. Yeah. Very, very good. People in the house. <laughs> Gabe's a, <laughs> a little closer. Yeah. To the rest of them. Um. But I, I, I think they're rather balanced. It's not in the sense where, you know, pick pick Odin and Wukong or else you're stupid. Yeah. Right? Oh, I could agree with that. Which was the old which was the old you know, you can choose not to pick Kumba, which is probably the wrong choice, but you won't necessarily lose because of it. Mm hmm I, and I, I don't know, I feel like this latest balance patch is one of my favorite patches in Smite because of just how Balanced. The, the hunter role has always generally been balanced, but the the guardian role is rather balanced as well. Yeah, I think I think last when we had when Hyrus Chris came on that one time we were talking with him. That was one of the times when he had said this is you know around that patch there was one of the most major 
balance patches we'll see. Um, and, right. and moving forward, you're very much going to see just very small tweaks. So they're getting to a point where they're very, very happy with the balance. And I can agree. It's not like right now, like remember when Uller first came out, it was like, oh my gosh, like he is not balanced. We are not seeing that right now at all. Uh, and so, uh, oh, uh, come on. Who, uh, who, who, uh, <laughs> who's the most highly prioritized hunter right now? Who's a hunter Apollo? that's in every game or yeah. banned? Yeah. Apollo? Okay, who's the support that's in every game or banned? That doesn't mean that they're overpowered or super strong. No, no I'm not saying okay. that. I'm just okay. saying that they're kind of over-centralizing. Sure. But, but there's a priority has, on has, them. I think that that has let... So, Kumba, I'll agree with you on. Yeah. Kumba, there's a priority on. That said, it's a smaller... There's a smaller... You can play other stuff if you want and still be... Yeah, yeah. It's not as big uh, as a gap as Sun Wukong. Hunter? Was. Sure. Hunter is popularity based. Apollo can do something that no other hunter can do in the sense that he's a split push champion. However, yes. yep. Artemis can do something no one else can do, as in yeah. kill you in like five <laughs> I know, with an auto attack. <laughs> and that, that's what I'm saying. So I, They all have their pulls, yeah. I think, cor I, I think that correlation is not causation. That is fact. Which is. What Numbers! Is. Correlation is not causation. <laughs> and it's I feel like. The fact that Apollo is chosen every game has more to do with who plays Apollo and likes Apollo and who, what players you associate with Apollo, more so than his kit's overpowered. Okay. Is Across no, the Sky I think his really kit is good? overpowered. Do you? I think Why like does he get 50 cool protections off his bed? <laughs> right. That is right. pretty good. That, that, that is that very is good. The one, that is the one curious aspect of his, ult uh, of his kit. You're totally right. But totally doesn't make him broken everything else is fine everything else is fine it's just that's that's come on that's i don't kinda, I, I don't think dumb. he's anywhere close to overpowered the reason i'm not saying that the reason he's the reason he's picked at every game isn't because he's more powerful than the other hunters sans shibalanki and cupid they're not really hunters um but with uller apollo neath artemis uh amusing cob i'll include in that on <laughs> her I'm t I have a harder time including Amusing Cobb, but I don't think he's out of it. On her, Apollo, Artemis, I think they're all on the same level. Okay. It's just the fact that Zatman and Barracuda play Apollo. People won't be like that. And, and Reels X. That's needs true. To That's true. Reels X plays Reels a X. beastly Apollo. Props to him. Reels <laughs> X is Boy. also part of the Apollo player pool. Um, That's the and, boys for doing it today, though. Yeah. And Quick, you, we'll get there. We'll get there. And, you know, so I think it has more to do with that, like, the, the you know, popular players, popularized gods. Okay. Artemis can kill towers faster than Apollo, can yep. kill you faster than Apollo. We see her play less. Yes, she is harder to play, but... And that's because she doesn't have a disengage. Much. She doesn't have as well of a disengage. She has Tusky, which is a great disengage, but that's also your, your in-game. Yes, correct, and correct. And Tusky's kind of stupid and does stuff he wants. <laughs> yes, right? So let's go ahead and, uh, Fats, you want to take the third question? Uh, man, reading's hard. Why, when, as a new player, when I mess up, I get flamed, but no one reports that person? I'm guessing that means a person who's flaming him. So my question is, is flaming justified if you flame a person that plays badly? No. That's it. That's the answer to that question. Yeah. There's, no, there's no reason to even go in-depth on this. There is never a reason to be an asshole. Plain and simple. It, it pretty much yeah. is it. Yeah, that's that's basically it. There's no reason the people with you are probably reporting that guy. Yeah. You just don't. You don't like when you leave lobby or when you're in lobby. You don't get a message saying system. <laughs> Garbage player forty two has reported flamer. Thank like, goodness. Thank you goodness. No that's idea. Hey, hey, you're flaming right now. Garbage that's... player forty two tries his best. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> There's no need. Listen, just because you change your name from garbage player to F swag does not mean anything. Right? Yeah. Stop the self -beam. Yeah. No, I mean, Zero, yeah. I love you, Fat Solomon. <laughs> fat Solomon. So what? Flaming, flaming at BM is definitely something that's always up for discussion, and it's something that is very. It just comes with. Uh, unfortunately, with almost any video game you play. It's going to be yeah. far worse in some video games than others. It's just the way it works out. Um, and it very much is so, is if we all jumped into a game and someone is not doing so well on a god, like FDOT, for example, you know, it's going to happen where people that will just go ahead and just go ahead and give them a hard time. 
Why? Oh, because yeah. they're not performing at the same level as someone else. If you're not winning ridiculously, you're go there's going to be BM. I mean, I don't know that I've been in any game where there isn't somebody that gives someone a hard time about something. Why did Dude, you do this? So the other you day. Do Dude, I played Hearthstone the other day. Because <laughs> you, you can't. You the can't. There's no chat. Nope. It's impossible. Yep. But you can find out the, <laughs> the username of the person you just played against, yep. add them as a friend, go through two more hoops, and then BM them. Yes. Some guy did that. Really? Like, really? like I beat him using something really cheesy, yep. and he just, he like, it took him like 45 minutes to be friends <laughs> with me. And then he like opened up his, oh, that's the guy, yeah, F you, man, you have no life, you're so bad, make a real deck, and, you know, so, like, that's Hearthstone, a game that, like, I play when I make sandwiches and, like, yep. go to the bathroom, like, I don't, that's perfect. nobody plays Hearthstone seriously, wrong. wait, wait, wrong, don't Even say that, don't say that after DreamHack 2014 just happened, come on now, where everyone now. cheated, sorry, different conversation, that's not even but, cheating, wait, what, really, no, no what happened cheated. was, one of the players was in game, and they were playing against each other, game number two, um, I'm not talking and, about that one, and what happened was, he got a, he got a message, like a whisper, from an outside source, and it uh -huh. was saying, it was like the second to last turn and it said, so and so has Hunter's Mark. And the reason is, is because Blizzard did not implement a do not disturb or turn <laughs> it off. So if you're friends with me, Fats, at any time, you can whisper me. So there was no delay. It was like almost real time, a little bit of delay with the stream, but it, would it went ahead and sent him that. So he knew what one of his players, what the enemy player had in his hand. Now, granted, he only had two cards. The one was Hunter's Mark. So that's what happened. <laughs> And there, there was it's like, not, it's not the, his fault though. It's not his fault. Yeah, no, 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 no. There were, there were, there were other instances of cheating. Wow. But I mean, this is something that like. Or game number one. Just game number one. This is, this is something that's happened in card game. Magic yeah. the Gathering. One of the, yeah. one of the, one of the highest winning Magic the Gathering players. It's a card that lets you draw a single card. Mm. He got caught drawing three cards, mm. and they were like, "Oh crap, you're in trouble." They reviewed all his tapes for like ten years, and he did it for <laughs> ten years. Like. Card games just attract cheaters. But what I'm, what I'm, what my yeah. point was, even in a game like Hearthstone, which is a casual environment for the yeah. most part, yep. most people on the ladder don't take it seriously unless you're legend. Yeah. It's a lot of times, exclusively, I play Hearthstone when I get up from my computer, like go to the bathroom, or when I have to go downstairs and wait for pizza. Because yeah. I'm in the attic. It's quick, easy, and... Like, that's I what agree. I do. I and this guy, like, he went through leaps and hoops and jumps to BM me on a platform that I play on my iPad sometimes. Like, it doesn't matter what you're playing, somebody's going to be mad and make try to make you feel bad. And at the end of the day, you just have to say either... A, I don't take Smite seriously. I'm playing casually. I obviously don't try to be bad, but yeah. whatever. Or you say, I take Smite seriously, but I'm not good yet. Just wait, you know? And the important part is, I think, of what I just said is to not actually verbalize it to the person, but say it to yourself. Because, like, a lot of the BM that comes out, A is generally dumb. A is generally projecting if you want to use a psych one-on-one -on -one word. And yeah. at the end of the day, it just don't matter much because I don't even know who you are. The big, so the... When, I get, when I get into a game and I go 0-9 oh, Shiblonki in a casual queue and, like, Frozen Warrior 427 Smoke calls me garbage <laughs> and like tells me to uninstall the game i sit One, there and i'm two, like seven, i don't know what i'm doing with shivalanki i don't yeah, care right? about you yeah. i will never see you like forget you bro and that's really the attitude you have to the attitude you have to go in when people start bming you is just think internally and be like no doubt i can be better let's try to be better that guy he's mad because like his dog ran away or his sister fell out of college oh, okay something to make him <laughs> mad elsewhere it's not about you it's about them I'm and, and the big thing is too we don't want to see smite like like high res has, has been moving in the direction of trying to counter bad manner troll actions within the game which is Tough. Which, which, like uh, which they have, which is one of the things we're like removing ELO, also like removing ELO visibility, um, changing up the randomization of people in lobby. We don't Can want, we, th we don't want the next step to be removing chat in game and only using the VGS system because the VGS system is like the same thing in Hearthstone where you could only say like six select things. Well met. Yes. Well, met. but but let me pause here because Fats has something to say. Look at him; he just ha oh, here it comes. He's, he's he just, uh. You said you said Elo. Uh, MMR. Last night, yeah. La la no, no, that's okay. fine. Last right. night I played rank. Okay. While drunk. 
All right, so I would have and I'm on three. All right, and I got a game of glasses. Really? Who's in Masters? What? Was it, what time and was it? What time we was won it? the game, and it? now I'm plat three. Holy crap! <laughs> Did it? Yo, we just had we had a whole conversation with High Res Chris about the I'm system. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah. Mad boy. We had an entire. <laughs> it's garbage. We had, entire, we, had we, had we had an entire conversation. We had an entire conversation. We had an entire conversation with High Res Chris, and there were so many things where we're like, "Why does this happen? Why does this happen?" And then the next, and the same episode, Wolfie was on there, and he's like, "Oh, it's working fine, blah blah blah." But no, something like that is like really. That is such, and they did. Now, granted, they did go ahead and talk about adjustments last patch that they made in order to allow people to progress faster. But that one game causing that, like, I know the explanation is going to come out. Like, Chris is going to post in chat and be like, well, Fats had a higher MMR rating. It was just waiting to get launched. It was just that my one MMR, game. That put a... <laughs> my, my MMR, my ELO is 2,100. Uh, now, now, right? No, no, it was that way. <laughs> How That's is it 2100? Right. My elo is 1200, and, you're and I'm in silver one. Oh, what? Word. You're garbage, and I'm in plat three. I'm not garbage. L's. That's the thing. L's. I am, well, I can't even hold L's. all these L's. Yo, yo, L's. I'm just gonna stick to viewer games and not touch ranked, just like Fats, I always have. Chat. Just like I always F's have. Out, look at the chat. <laughs> F's out, look at the chat. <laughs> there you go. Is, is 1254. Oh, no, there you go. go. Hey, uh, one of those. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Man. <laughs> I forgot you talked to me. <laughs> who's, who's, whose symbol is oh, that? Whose symbol That's is fats. that with the L? That's fat. That's That's what fats. is that? What is that L? Hold that L. What is that L? What does the L stand for? Is it loser? What is it? All right, Octane Dad. <laughs> Yo, come on now. This is no, 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 no. Please, this we, we will we will tell you. We will please, please. But this is one of the larger Octane Dad moments we've oh, had. Oh, whatever. On Would you get it? Really no. Is. Basically, what you did was like, hey, you know, you young hip kids, what does <laughs> what does dope mean? Oh, stop. Can it. you explain <laughs> to me what dope means? This All is, right, come is... on, come on. What do you got? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. L loss. Hold okay. that loss. All right, I get it. Win yeah. the loss. I get it. Go. I get it. I get it. It's fine. Thank you. We're here to help. I hate you people. <laughs> we love you. We're here to help you. We're Moving on. on. Moving Spot on. Okay. Uh, last part. Last one. Uh, part of our uh, community email section is not actually a question, but feedback that I thought I'd share, which is always great to hear, and we definitely want to hear this stuff. Uh, this comes from Jake. He says three and a half hours this week. Yes, please. Makes my Monday morning afternoon commute so much better. I started listening to Smite Update shortly after I started playing and got addicted to Smite. For over a year now, it's been my go-to spot for hearing some great discussion on the newest happenings in the game I love. Keep up the great work. So, thanks, Jake. Appreciate it. It's always it's always good to hear that. You know, in the past, we've gotten some negative emails here and there. So, and FDOT loves the negative emails, by the way. Can I can I point I out? <laughs> so, uh, I actually didn't, I didn't get to see any this week. And I, was I just laughed at them <laughs> oh it's hilarious but uh actually something i wanted to say go for it before we were talking about um my elo the l the magic l i don't know forget it I'll bring it it's again. gone it's gone oh, 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 oh i tweeted i tweeted at brandon the other day about okay. uh brandon and i have very similar feelings on ranked like okay i I enjoy, I enjoy ranked because I enjoy a serious game most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I've fallen back on my casuals and like play stuff I'm bad at yeah. just because it's fun. But sometimes you want to go in and like put the try hard pants on and really go ham. Sure, and, like, I can understand you, that. You know, even when I lose in that sort of scenario, I feel okay because like I tried my best and like I know where I messed up and I can mm -hmm. get better. Da -da -da. But like when I go twenty and two and have eight thousand structure damage and can't win because my Anubis yep. has built guard boots and Pythagotherum's piece. Like, <laughs> Pythagorum's. Pythagotherum. Pythagotherum. Is the wrong way to say it, but I, I shouts to Charlie. Pythagotherum. Oh, you say the wrong thing? Oh, that's fine. I like that. I call her <laughs> Athena Aeris. Yo, it's hilarious, isn't it? Aeris is a good mage. 
Eris? So, but, so, but, 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 but anyway, going, anyway, 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 so rank can be like a rather discouraging situation because everybody's just, and, and I said to Brandon, I said, you know, rank actually support, because Brandon had a similar experience and, okay. and he, DM Brandon, of course, he tweeted, uh, he, he, like he was making fun of ranked and I was like, look, ranked actually supports a more social game. High res puts it in there so that when you try hard and everybody on your team is busy eating <laughs> out of the dumpster, you remember that you have friends and you go play with them. Because playing with randoms on the ranked <laughs> ladder can be very obnoxious. So so here's the issue though. Like we discussed this kind of a little bit with Woofy, and there isn't really a good way to combat it except for population, and we keep talking about it, is the fact that like you have F dot and he talks about the fact of like when a situation you go twenty and two. But then you but then you go ahead and lose that game, and then of course your your ELO suffers from it. And something that High Res Chris had gone ahead and talked about, and same thing with Woofy, those wondering, is like the reason that we're going ahead, th that from what our understanding, what we're being told, you know, the reason is right now is population and rank. But within the leagues themselves, yeah. your silver and your bronze, there is not enough population right now in order to run into, you know, to correct that issue. If you had a million people playing yep. ranked alone, it would be perfect. It'd be an ideal situation. But it isn't that. So that's why someone like Fats was put into a game with someone like Lassus. Was the population wasn't so the, the, the population wasn't there? They were trying to balance out the teams, Elo, and so they inserted a lower, lower Elo person like Fats and inserted him there, and then he won, and he benefits from it. Platinum three, Elo doesn't lie. <laughs> I was not the lower person inserted. Please stop slamming. You wouldn't be able to tell because it was. But you can't uh, tell anymore. Randomized. That's right. It's randomized. For a, for a Your Elo isn't listed experience. on the website anymore, which I disagree with. But whatever. Oh, but there's many, many but Elo it does bots. say Plat 3. You're not lying. I, why would I lie? I'm not a liar. Yeah. I am not. How, how, when do I, I lie? I was just hoping. I was just hoping. That oh, maybe... you're terrible. So let's go ahead and move on. If you guys want to go ahead and email the show, please feel free to. The email address is directly below our webcams here, smiteupdate at gmail.com. Go ahead, email us your comments and or your questions, and we will select a few that will go ahead and win gems or skin code. Whatever I have available at that time, I'll send it back to you after the show. Um, you know, there's a ton of people that email us. We can't take all of them. Um, but if one week where we have a little bit less, we can always take some previous week ones for sure. Um, also, if you guys are enjoying the show, please go, into, go down directly below this video stream. There is a streamer feedback button. Make sure you guys go ahead and click that and let us know exactly if you guys like the show, dislike the show, you have some comments to add, you know, click that streamer feedback button and go ahead. Um, the show is directly under my name, Octane Pro, on that list. So go ahead and give us some feedback. Let us know if you like it, you dislike it. Uh, it definitely gives good feedback to High Res and keeps us going each week and allows High Res to uh, allow us to do the show on their channel. I wish we had, uh, I wish we hosted the show on like a farm. Or something a farm somewhere why? where we had chickens oh, so that we could make a pun out of feedback like chicken feed. uh, give us some wow. feedback we'll give you some terrible. feedback and you can have like food a... back. That's terrible the food chicken. back food listen food i back. really like chickens have you ever pet a chicken okay this is so moving chickens on from, moving, social creatures. <laughs> moving on from here sadly i have to say let's go ahead and toss it on to f dot for this week's esports update so this week in what the hell's happening? <laughs> What's it's, going on? Actually, yeah, what is actually happening? So I'm gonna say two things. And Wait, then I'm before just you do, before you do, my comment is, who paid who this week? Is what I want to know. Who paid yeah, who? Yeah. I swear, so, somebody got paid. It was that kid Someone who whispered paid. that guy at DreamHack? Yeah, right. Yeah. So basically, snipe one NA. What? And what? SK Gaming one EU. Who? 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 Sorry, no. SK. Sorry, SK. And, 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 first of all, first of all, first of all, congratulations to both teams. Yo, uh, yeah, without a doubt. Huge win. I am, I'm going to put on my fan hat real quick. Put it on. Uh, just because. He was from I both teams. I love the dudes on SK Gaming. I have sat here on Smart Update and told you that they're not a good team. And oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yep. Not going to win. Yep. And... The fact that they won, I am just incredibly shocked. happy. I think I'm, everyone, I'm a little bit shocked. Everyone is shocked. Everyone's shocked. Anybody that tells you they're not shocked is a freaking liar, mm -hmm. except for the five guys on SK. But <laughs> I am, like, 
Captain Twig is one of the best mids in EU. Reels X is one of my better friends. Like, we, 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 like, we're on opposite ends of the, of the world, so we don't really get to talk anymore, but we get along swimmingly. We're, we're rather good friends. Like, I just... SK Gaming is a great, heartful team. They are Europe's denial. That is who, what SK Gaming Who is. now is on the team that wasn't previously at the launch tournament? Because I'm looking at their, I'm looking at the who played in there, and you know I'm not recognizing names like playing for fun and mania and stuff like that. Like they, I'm trying to think because there was a lot that went on with SK when we got back. There was a lot <laughs> that went on. Right, all right. So, so what's up, Fats? Is... Fats is like, stop the show. What do you got? Whoa, what? Look at what's his up, face. Buddy? EU what? admin. Okay. SKB TSM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. T to be fair, TSM has <laughs> been on a little bit of a slant. Yeah. But they're still TSM, and I don't like. I don't think that SK beat TSM because TSM isn't TSM right now. TSM generally isn't TSM right now. But they have been, they have been TSM since the play. launch tournament. To be honest with you, uh, I think the first week they really came out to play. Yo, guys. Yo. What up, Cena? <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I don't think anyone saw that coming. No one saw SK. No. Okay, question. Why this? Don't I know we're, we're all off track. Why this week did SK Gaming do so well? Because usually you didn't see them get past round two, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. What's I, changed? Uh, What's changed? I don't know. Sometimes things just work out. Just click? Sometimes Maybe somebody's just on click. tilt. Maybe somebody's on fire. Who knows? I'm well, just surprised it happened. Well, you take a look at who they played, mm -hmm. and I really apologize to Team Vindicate, but I don't know who you are. You guys lost in the first well, round. Well, they're they're so, seated 26, so they're definitely newer, yeah, they, without yeah, a doubt. Like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Superbia is a team transitioning to Conquest. Mm. SK beat them. But right away, in the round of uh, Doom Four Six Eight. SK played TSM and they won. Yeah. Like I said, part of that is is that TSM isn't really all there at the moment. Yeah. Um, TSM has definitely not been the same team that they have been. The TSM isn't the same team that they were previously at the moment, and I think it's a temporary slant before people think I'm the most VM in the world. Uh, no, I even Michael agree. Jordan had like bad streaks, you know. And so, if Wayne Gretzky can can have a slump, so can TSM. What do you think, think TSM's TSM... issue is right now, though? Because it's definitely nothing. nothing. You just think they're just at a stale point? Which ever, I, if... every team runs into. Look at Dignitas for the longest time. Yeah. I yeah. mean... If, 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 honestly, I'm being completely serious, and, and Zimstar runs his team the way he wants, I don't know what Zimstar's been doing. Yeah. Uh, but if I was coach of Team Solo Mid right now, I would change nothing. I would just make sure we practice. Mm. I would make sure we watched VODs. And whatever specific mistakes, I would make sure I brought attention to them and fix it. But outside of that, I would just keep doing TSM. Because while TSM is slumping right now, they are still Team Solo Mid. They still employ Lobster, Smek, Game Hunter, Trix Tank, and Qvo Fred. Yeah. You don't keep those guys down for an entire season. So while, yes, they're slumping... And that might have to do so, but yeah. So SK Gaming has been on the largest slump. They have been slumping since before the launch tournament. Yeah, yeah. Um, beating SK Gaming was, or uh, beating TSM was a little bit, TSM definitely, you know, they showed a little bit of what they've been doing lately. But Cubo Fred still had like seven or eight kills. That definitely happened. And... So it wasn't, what I'm saying is, Team Solo Mid is on a slant. Yes, was it free? Absolutely not. Um, so, you know. What do you that. think What do you think of TSM, Fats? You know, as you were talking about, what do you think of TSM and SK right now, kind of big topics in the EU scene? I like the guys who play on that team. <laughs> Which what team? Other than that, my opinion is zilch. Okay. All right. Going to play the political route. I That's see how it political. is. I know, right? Got it. 
Got it. <laughs> Got it. Not political. Answer. Ask me. <laughs> all right. All right. So let's talk yeah, about. You were, you were super biased over there, man. Let's talk about the. Uh, the let's, let's talk about uh, the top four. <laughs> what were our top four for NA? Because I think we got some to talk about with NA for sure. What do we got? Uh, legally, top... or who we just think the top four players are? <laughs> <laughs> who placed this week top four? What do you got? Oh, okay. 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 Dig, uh, cog and cog red. Snipe first. Surprised as well. We just talked about it. Very surprised. I mean, well, yeah, very, very, very surprised. But I, I do, like, SK, we we need to hold on NA real quick. All right. You got more of you? SK earned... SK really earned stuff this week, guys. I want to um, see. I want to see if they keep it though. Like, I'm really eager to see next weekend if they can keep that too. consistency because this could just be like fat set. Things just clicked, or it could very well be okay. They figured out what was going on and things are going great now. See, I think things clicked in the perfect way. Okay. Um, because he, here's here's a couple of things that happened. TSM has been TSM has been slumping lately, and yep. SK Gaming routinely gets beat by TSM. Uh, I kind of feel that SK is, in general, not as good a team as TSM. But their specific key points, Captain Twig, Reelsex, and, and uh, I guess it would be Badger. I kind of generally stick to Captain Twig and Reelsex. I think okay. they just have two guys that are extremely good. Um, those, guys, those guys are as good as any of the pro teams. Captain Twig could start on Team Solo Mid if you if 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 everything like if we were in a different world. Yeah, yeah. And Reels X, he's not quite the difference. He, that's I mean, great. Lot. He did really good. Nine one so, in the game there. Reels X, Reels X is a difference maker and not a playmaker, and I think that's totally freaking fine. Real, so when you see Zapman, you see Barracuda. The game develops around them. Yeah, and the plays they make. Yep. Exactly. Reels X doesn't necessarily make the plays, but when there's a team fight, he wins it. When there's a situation where he needs to dive, he goes and he wins it. Reels X has great instincts and knows how to fight around the game. He's just not the Michael Jordan. He's not the number, number one. Sure. That you more look towards Captain Twig to make a rotation or yeah. Badger to set something up. And then, not that that's a bad thing, Reels does his job and he does it very, very well. And basically, when things work out, Reels X goes 10 and 1, 9 and 1, 7 and 2. That's what he does. And so, you give him the opportunity to do that. It will happen. They beat TSM because of it. And they beat Cloud9 because of it. Reels played so incredibly well. Reels played so incredibly well. And I'm just really excited that SK won because I don't think that they are a top 4 team. I, in the past, yeah, I think that it was very clearly TSM, Cloud9, Agilitas, Worth Gaming, I5. Those are the top five teams, you know. Bloody, te you know, um, Clueless comes in every now, and then. but like, it wasn't really a thing for SK. SK is now, after this win, I think they feel confident about themselves. I think that's going to help the team more than they would probably like to admit, because psychologically, oh I think yeah, it's going to be huge. I think psychologically that team had a lot of issues, and I'm really, really, really proud that they did not give up. They replaced their solo laner because NQ, like, like they replaced people because they absolutely had to, but they yeah. didn't give up. There are teams that we've seen. Where is Denial Esports? Where is the other team that came out of NA? That just, SK was just like, nah, bro, we'll do it. We'll do it. And they just <laughs> kept doing it week in, week out, losing, taking the small victories they had, and now they're number one. Well, they won this weekend. They took they the They won, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think that's a big credit to the mental fortitude of this team. And because of that, because that mental fortitude exists, I think that that'll be a large part of their character going forward. Like, I've always rated that as a large part of their character. Reels doesn't go on tilt. <laughs> you can kill Reels five times in lane. And he will still play late game the way he plays late game because that's just like he just doesn't go on tilt. He's he's just he's a hoppy child from UK. Twenty dollars, <laughs> mate. Twenty dollars, mate. Like he just he's just there to have a good time and win because he's better than a lot of people. Yeah. So yeah, you know it's 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 cool stuff and and I'm really happy about SK Gaming and I think they earned it and I think that this win will help them maybe not win first place. But I think this win will help them win more games overall in the future. 
And I think it'll help them qualify because I really think mentally this team got the jolt that it needed. I, I don't, yeah, I'm eager to see if they actually end up qualifying, to be honest with you. We'll, we'll definitely have to see uh, we'll moving see. forward. So in NA scene, as you said, we had Snipe, Dignitas, Cognitive Gaming, and then Cognitive Gaming Red. Um, is it Cognitive Gaming Red or just Cognitive Red? I assume it's Cognitive Gaming Red. Just the way it's, it's listed. Cog Red. Yeah. So Snipe first place. I know everyone's kind of surprised about that. For sure. Um, Fats, any thoughts there on the NA scene? Just having Snipe in first and both cognitive teams in third and fourth? Well, with the recent roster changes, the emotional boys finally found out <laughs> that, hey, maybe if we're happy, <laughs> the emotion that'll help us win. Yeah. yeah. Also, Jerv's alter godlike. <laughs> Before we start talking seriously about that, can we just talk about how Dignitas got fired, Giant. Dignitas and Snipe fought. Four members of Snipe died. Jeremy was the only one alive. They got fired, Giant, right? Jeremy oh watched them get fired, Giant. Funniest Nothing he can do world. about it, right? Funniest thing. So, so Dig, like, gets it. When you're playing, you hear the ding. Yeah. You know he's dead. They all ran away. They, like, are at base. And Jeremy, like, out, he's playing out Kwong. You watch his character model, like, turn right. It turns left. It looks at the fire giant cave and it oh, oh. <laughs> and drops a tornado. Just pissed. And, and drops, drops a tornado. A tornado. He was just like, yeah, I tried. <laughs> just like Jig was already at base. Yeah. He definitely knew they were. It was just like one of those things. Like, and I, I love to see that. And really happy that happened with Snipe because yeah, that's a situation where you you, you can't change that. Al Kwong is not realistically going to steal a fire giant from five members of an enemy team. It's not going to happen. You might be able to peek, like, you might be able to pinch off one person that's low health, but you're not realistically going to steal it. So, going in would just give them another kill. That's stupid. So, what do you, like, there's, you literally have nothing to do. Just don't die and, like, try to stay high spirits, you know? And I, I thought that was hilarious. I don't know. Do you, that game between Snipe and Dignitas, or that, those games, I'm sorry, do you feel it was, because from what I'm noticing, like, I noticed a lot that Zapman seemed to be shut down a lot of the time. Like, yes. I mean, taking a look at some of the stats from that game, like one here, for example, one of the games, 5 and 10. Like, that's pretty good shutdown of the Hunter on the opposite team. Do you, I mean, and whereas in reality, as we talked about earlier, as the Hunter, you're really, and, and FDOT had talked about how, you know, you go ahead and, and you surround yourself with the plays that the hunter makes. Um, and that kind of sets the flow of that game. And here, I mean, Zatman 5 and 10, not exactly the best at all. Uh, I mean, and what do you think? Large credit of that goes to Incontinentia, mm, which... On Geb, yeah. If, Incon if Incontinentia... I, I, I am saying this publicly on the official Smite channel. If Incontinentia doesn't get MVP, I don't know what's going on. Dude, he went 7-2 and two is Geb, by the way, in the last game. <laughs> <laughs> That's Geb! That's Geb! He has more kills than the best Anatoly, Dig or, um, Zatman. I mean... That's, you know, it's... He's just... <laughs> and, and, and Incontinentia is very worthy of that MVP in a non-fluke type situation. Yeah. Incon is a very good support. Um, he, he just... He... Snipe won... Incon won. The yeah. roster changes that were made did not affect this win. Mm. And we can dive we can delve more into that in a second. But the roster changes that were made did not make this win happen. Incontinentia made this win happen. Yep. And a certain <laughs> god, not player, made this win happen. My man's what did I say what earlier? Was. What did I say earlier? <laughs> what did you say earlier? Huh? What did you say earlier? Um, the question about... Oh, about Gab and Kuma Gardner? Yep, Gab and Kuma Gardner. Yep, good point. Wait, what? What? Remember the Guardian question? Yeah. About Gab and Kuma Gardner? Yeah. He oh, went. it's not Gab. I'm making fun of broken-ass <laughs> Nuwa that can win any game she wants by not playing the game. <laughs> That's what I'm talking You're about. actually all right. She can just chill. Shout-outs to Peckies, man! <laughs> Dude! Okay, so we we will we will talk and because me there's a stream delay. I'm pretty sure we said that at the exact same time in real life. Um, so so real shouts outs to because me because we will talk about that. Um, so 
uh, Incon largely won the game. Yeah. He put his team in positions to allow them to win. And Allied played lights out, but Allied played lights out off of Incon putting all of the lights out. Like, mm-hmm. Incon just played ridiculously well. So, and actually, this is an interesting conversation. That Run 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 brings up a really cool conversation, and I really like this. And I want to, I'll open up the floor and All we'll right. spread it amongst the three of us. So, a large part of the fact that Snipe won was due to the solo laner playing Nuwa. Um, Kiki Star, and again, I don't think Kiki Star played poorly. I don't think he played poorly. But I don't think Kiki Star, the player, did anything to win the game. I think the character he chose won the game. And so here's what happened. Kiki Star refused to team fight. Really? Just didn't happen. It was always <laughs> four on five. No, and he, he split pushed. You the can PvE. Time. Yeah. He <laughs> killed a Phoenix. Kiki Star killed a Phoenix late game in four seconds. A real wow. a, a real Phoenix, not a half health really? Phoenix. Really? Four seconds. By himself. Like, what happens is his team baited the fight on the other side of the map for the objective. Kiki Star walks up the map. Presses minions and kills a tower. They Boom. respond. He wins. You know, like do it again. Do it again. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Like, do it again. Apollo needs to wait for the wave. Yep. And as the enemy yep. team, you can watch the wave walk up. You can see where it is. You can judge how close it is to your tower. Sure. Use your brain to figure out if there's a player going to be there, and you can combat that. Which is why I'm okay with the fact that Apollo can PVE because okay. he really mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. You know. And hunters in general can just stay in their lane, but you really realistically can't do that because you're going to get responded to. Apollo can ult out, but you got to wait for a wave. There's one. New Wa can just walk away and make her own. <laughs> and then go and kill a phoenix. Go and kill a tower. Exactly I do not know what that noise and, was or what that was, it, but all right. It, it totally won the game. And, you know, Shane breaks up a point. Wolfie doesn't play New Wa, yeah. so the god pool conversation comes into play. Sure. And like I said, I'm totally not trashing on Kiki Star or Snipe. Snipe won the match, and I like to highlight the... F- I really like to highlight Incon's play over the small new gripe. Um, but the new conversation is more of a conversation about the holistic game than the fact that Snipe won. I'm not diminishing Snipe's win. They earned it, and Incon is a large part of that. You know, like, all credit to Incon and the rest of Snipe. Not taking that away from you. And the, the and you're right. Nuwa wouldn't have been played if if Wolfie was in the game. Wolfie doesn't play Nuwa well. Da da da. But let's talk about why Nuwa's like. Do we feel like Nuwa is cool? Do you like the fact that Nuwa can exist? I think Nuwa's well, underrated. To be honest, underrated. With you. Underrated. Yeah. Like people she's, people she's don't give her enough rated. credit. Like of how good she's she really rated, is. Yeah, she's highly rated by players that, you know, like. <laughs> so, Nuwa go ahead. What do you got? Nuwa basically means one person has to be dedicated to fighting Nuwa the entire game. Yep. Yep. It becomes a 4v4. 4v4 and two PvE players. Who are you going to pick to PvE the Nuwa? Who can kill her clay minions <laughs> and still get damage off her while she's doing double damage to you because snakes are dumb? <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't do a lot of damage until late game, but then she does do a lot of damage. I mean, if she's next to you in her fog and she drops a three, and then she drops the box of demons mm-hmm. and Zonkwe shows up, like, what happens? Does the world explode? Do the police show up? Or do you just die in three hits? Snakes. <laughs> yeah. So let's go. Let's go ahead and take a look at our rankings for this week. Uh, F dot. What do we got for top four and, and where they're sitting right now for NA and EU? What do you got? Um, because we had so many upsets. Yeah. Things didn't really change all yeah. that much. No, no, no. Uh, looking at looking at the the rankings right now, Dig is still in the win. I five eighty. It's pretty decent. I mean, one four. Six. Dignitas has has unofficially clinched. Basically, as long as they finish in the top five next week, they're going to the land. Yeah. They're going to regionals. Um, so, like, have they clinched yet? No. Will they get knocked out before the round of eight? Obviously not. No. So, they are, their magic number is one. They need to win any game at all to clinch. They've obviously clinched. Um, they're definitely a no-brainer. 
Yeah, yeah, Todd no Gailey is sitting with 440 points in second. Snipe, because really of their good. recent win, they're they're in third place now. Yeah, points that was huge for them. That really was because they were because last old. week we were talking about how they were kind of teetering there, and uh, when I was speaking with David Fry this past week, it was kind of very much up in the air, like you know, who could be there, and and his. He was really excited when I was speaking with him about COG, about the fact that there is an opportunity at not only the LAN, but also at the World Championship, that there will be two COG teams. Without a doubt, LAN. I don't know about World, but at least for the LAN. I mean, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely take a look at that, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep a close ear to the ground. Yeah. Personally, I do think COG Red, formerly known as the Game Changers, yeah. um, will make it. I, I definitely think they're good. But... Five five a.m. Five a.m. Five angry men. <laughs> five angry men has and they have DJ Pernicus, which is really good. I hate giving him credit because I hate to do that kid. But at the end of the day, DJ Pernicus is a good shot caller and a great player. Yeah, he plays differently, which is arguably a bigger deal than playing well. Okay, like. Snipe won, so Snipe won because of Incon, but one of the games was won earlier because of the character Nuwa and the fact that Kiki Star just PvE'd. Um, there wasn't a response to it, because we see Nuwa and like, she kind of does that anyway, but Kiki literally just PvE'd, which I will take, like, my, I personally don't really like that included in the game, but it's in the game, so let's talk about it objectively. Um, Kiki Star did something that not everybody does. And the enemy team didn't respond. And they lost because of it. They lost because of a bigger team fight that happened. But the fact was, they were already down a phoenix. They went ahead and killed the second phoenix. And they, that's all they needed to kill the boss. They, da, 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 da. So the sort boss. of the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. But the fact was, nobody responded to Kiki Star. He played a little bit different. And it won the game. Yeah. You can beat players better than you by playing differently. And that's what DJ Pernicus does. <laughs> like that that's 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 what he does. He brings Chalk into the jungle and doesn't play as a jungler. He just farms up and plays defensively jungler until he says, Haha, I have hog three and ult and my support can do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> like it's it's you know, he does different <laughs> things which keeps you on your toes. So yeah. because basically any team that DJ Pernicus is on, I don't expect to win because the game is a team game, but I never count them out because he's oh, yeah. gonna play. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, five angry men could, could it could happen, but cognitive red right now. I feel like the top four going to land will be Dig, Cog, Snipe, Cog Red. No, I think it's a good assumption. What do you think about this Double top four cog. fats? Double Cog. All right. It's effective. We saw them show up in full force. I mean, game changers change their own game mm -hmm. and name. And name. <laughs> All right, so what we got for EU? Actually, um, let's, let's, we'll, we'll move on to EU in a sec. Why don't okay. we talk about a little bit of the Cog Red, or do you want to move on to that? No, later? let's go for it. Go for Cog Red. All right, sweet. So, um, In case Octane people don't know, Pro, let them know. Yeah, so so basically, if, if, if you guys are uninitiated, so the uninitiated, the game changers, um, Snoopy, Zero Gars, etc., their team has been picked up by Cognitive Gaming officially as a second team. Cog Red is... A second team for cognitive gaming, they get it's it's tr not treated as a minor league team or, or a academy team, team or anything. Yeah, yep. the same it's thing. Not, it's not cog academy. We've seen teams in the right yep. team make an academy team. It's not an amateur team, folks. It's just a second team, which it's all sorts of cool for so many reasons with the organization. Mm -hmm. But Octane Pro had the had the pleasure of talking to David Fry a little more specifically yeah. about this pickup. Um, yeah, Octane Pro had an interview on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday interviews on Octane's channel is not necessarily something that's set in stone, but I think that's something he wants to do moving forward. Yep. Why don't you give a little? Yep. Why don't you give us a little highlights of that interview with um with David Fry? Sure, sure. So I got a chance to interview David Fry as we kind of talked about at the top of the show, and uh, it was pretty interesting because first off, you know, the interview starts out talking a little bit with David about you know where cognitive gaming came from, the name. Uh, what what sparked his interest as to having a, a esports team, and then some of the business end of it, you know, some of the financial aspects that some people don't think about. And then as we dove into it, we started to talk about, you know, what how did Cognitive come about? Why did he pick the players he did? But then as it transitions on, we start to talk a little bit more about Cognitive Red. 
And that was the big question because as I kind of asked him, I'd said, you know, you know, you, it was, it's very surprising right now in the scene to see an organization pick up a second smite team when we're still trying to get organizations to just get into the scene and pick up one team. Mm -hmm. And it was something interesting he pointed out at, and, and I don't, you know, he, he had, he had said this and I don't know how, how other, other professional players might be like, Oh, that's not true. But uh, David Fry had said the reason they picked up a second team was not because they weren't happy with their first team at all, but because of the fact that prior to the launch event, he, they couldn't find teams for cognitive to scrim. Nobody wanted yeah, to scrimmage them. Deal. And even after deal. after the, um, the uh, launch event, they still had issues, they said. And the problem was, was that their team, cognitive, the original cognitive here, didn't have a consistent scrimmage, um, a scrimmage rotation or schedule. Because literally it was like, okay, someone's finally willing to scrimmage us. Let's go ahead and do it now. And so they said when they were looking at it, they didn't even consider an academy team. They went ahead, looked at a team in the scene, which was doing very well, that would allow Cognitive to have a, 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 a partner pretty much to go ahead and scrimmage against. So now you have two Cognitive teams, which are in the top four for the NA scene, that will now be able to literally scrimmage every day of the week if they wanted to. And know that they're going to get some of the top competition out there. And, you know, David Fry said it's all about marketing and the fact that he can go ahead now. And at the LAN event, he could have possibly two teams there. That's double the amount of advertising, double the amount of marketing available for them. So from a finance, it wasn't anything about the financial aspect at all, he said. He said, picking up a second team, the structure is in place. Matty Pocket's going to go ahead and continue to manage the second team as well. So uh, it's pretty, That'll pretty exciting. Rough. I don't pretty agree exciting. with that. All right. Um, why is that? Not that I disagree. Just asking. Yeah, I just, I just, I just don't agree with that. Um, I would much rather see two separate managements. Uh, obviously, staffing is a concern, and it is what it is. But uh, yeah. you know, it it just makes sense. They're they're two different groups of people with their own sets of problems. What makes cognitive lose might not be the exact thing that makes cognitive red lose. It's yeah. a lot of work to be a coach, looking at hours and hours of VODs, setting up scrimmages, making sure you practice the things that your team needs to practice. It's all, it's very, very difficult to coach two teams, and I really don't like that decision. The team is super new, so maybe it's a temporary thing while they find a permanent coach for Cognitive. Yeah, that red. could be the case. Um, but I just, I just, I, I think that's a poor choice. That said, honestly, and you know, being real talk about David Fry, dude makes good decisions when it comes to his team and he puts the team first over his wallet. So I anticipate something, you know, either he feels that Manny Pocket is the right choice to coach both teams or he'll find another coach. Either way, he'll make the right decision. I, I, I feel maybe it'll be the wrong decision, but he'll make it for the right reasons. So I, I, I think that's pretty cool. But yeah. I thought this was awesome for two reasons. Uh, one, obviously what you said, making the team better. Um, having, a team, having a dedicated team to combat against each and every time. Showing, the, showing this other cognitive team your secret pocket strats yeah. might not be as bad. You know, NASCAR does a similar thing. NASCAR <laughs> does a similar thing where teammates play against each other. Mm -hmm. yeah yep they race so, in the same races stuff like that yep and they always have a designated winner though when you look at that stuff like they're like aiming for one of the members on their team to always win out and the second member to set up i mean i don't know nascar but from my understanding yeah, is they set yeah, it up basically yeah basically what happens is that uh there are teams in nascar and multiple players on the same team will race uh in the same race and they don't say, it's not like wrestling shouts to fats where they say all right <laughs> number 12 is gonna win uh, they say, all right, y'all go out there. And then as the race progresses and when number 12 yep. looks like he's going to win, then they're like, all right, we're going to set it up for number 12, start, like, drafting and do whatever I have, you know, whatever NASCAR strategy is. They, like, work it out and, and, and do that sort of thing. So I don't think there'll be any, like, I don't anticipate. And because of the organization that Cognitive is, I don't think collusion is even on the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think so either. I, I like, wouldn't. The players wouldn't be down. The ownership wouldn't be down. Like, I'm pretty sure if somebody told Barracuda to lose, he would, like, tear up every <laughs> Well, I, I mean, like, that's think about it. Think, you know, you talked about having an individual coach coaching two teams. Let's say you go to the LAN event. 
how does that work out with Maddie when you have both of them on the live stage and yeah. you're trying to talk about strategy? Like when we were talking with David, Fry, when I had the interview with David Fry, he comes, you know, part of his role in the team is to look at it from an analytical perspective where he's crunching the numbers saying, okay, this team plays these players a lot. Here's the percentage and chance to win. Here's the bands mm -hmm. they pick. Like that's very much an up and coming thing within the smite scene where these numbers mean everything and your bands and yeah. picks are all based off of previous engagements and stuff like that so when you're looking at that from david fry's perspective and crunching those numbers and then you look at like maddie pocket's playbook for example and you're trying to talk to your team ahead of time like how does that work like you're trying to coach them with a non-biased view but you can't there's no way you can make it non-biased regardless of what you try i mean we we try to say that we're non-biased but you know <laughs> it doesn't work like you can't have maddie pocket giving recommendations to both teams and not be biased regardless of one over the other i i, I will definitely I'm, disagree with that i i don't believe that that would be the case i mean basically what i'm saying is having a specific coach for that team cognitive red means that they will have an effective coach that works specifically for them and yep. their players and how they yeah. play and is able to make them actually realize the specific choice they need to make to help them better themselves while not spreading, you know, Maddie Pocket too thin. Exactly. Having Maddie do specifically Cog Prime, as they are now known, <laughs> in my head. Co Cogdemus Prime. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm terrible. That's awesome. So, um, <clears throat> Him doing them only as he's been doing has resulted in some good results for them. Bringing somebody else on who's been in the scene for a long time would help Cognitive Red uh, have their own coach that can help them specifically and really push them farther, kind of like another Maddie Pocket, etc. Yeah. Yeah. He's just not going to be everywhere at the same time. Because wanna... putting him everywhere at the same time is going to cause problems. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not going to work out for them. So yeah. I think all of us can agree they need they it, it would be good in the long hire term to have I mean, That's right. There you go. There you go. I mean, they got, they got fourth this week. They can hire F dot and get fifth. Like, <laughs> awesome. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> that's not funny. No, you just made fun of me. He smiled mad. and then he realized it. A little slow. A little slow. Mad. <laughs> I'm totally mad. But actually, you know, you know who I really wish um I wish Adonis wasn't working for high res because yeah, I be good. would be good absolutely coach. love him in a coaching position. If Adonis came down and coached five angry men, I think five angry men could become five angry winners. Any like, team. I any really team could benefit from it astronomically. Yeah. Like, yeah. there was somebody who was funny. Shouts, shouts, to, shouts to Claren and Octane. You all right? I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. All of a sudden, I'm like, ugh, disaster, but I'll survive. You kind of sound like Gucci Mane this week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it was now, let me ask you this question. Do, do, you, do you know who He doesn't know who that is. Don't nope. do it. Don't do it. Nope, but now I'm going to Google it. Don't do it. Don't Google it. Don't save yourself. Nope. I hate don't you. Even do I just Googled it. I hate you. <laughs> don't even. Gucci Mane. Gucci I, don't, Mane. I don't listen he, to that garbage. He always, he I don't always listen to that garbage. And he sounds like he knows, Oh, though. that's, that's a disaster. That's how Somebody had great. somebody in chat had uh, had made a comment and I disagree with it. They had said uh, players should be managing themselves, not coaches or team managers. I completely disagree. That is that is the way the scene that the way the scene developed maybe six months a year ago, but the scene is so developed now to the point where it's complete. Like we talked about it last week, how coaches are becoming a necessity moving forward to hit that top four spot. Now, granted, some don't have it, and you can say, oh, Dignitas is a key example. Blah blah blah. Moving forward, though, I bet you in the next year we see them pick up a coach of some kind, even if it's somebody that's analyzing things or something of that sort. I think it's a necessity. I mean, it's, it's I mean, a must-have. Yeah, like, so... So Dignitas doesn't have a dedicated coach. They do a lot of that stuff in-house yeah. with the five of them, but the organization does provide numbers and stuff, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, you know, Odell is a... O, Odell is a great owner. Uh, the dude cares. The dude mm. loves his teams. Obviously, Dignitas is in a much different situation than Cog. Yeah. In the sense that they have tons of teams spread out amongst different games. Yeah. But you know, they, there's still a little bit of organizational stuff in there, and and I, as good as Dignitas is, I think they could be better with a coach. But, yep. You know, at the moment, basically, I come from the camp. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, I agree with not with dignitas not having a coach at right now 
but there's always room for improvement and that can take that can push them over like i feel yes. like without yes. a doubt I, you know yes i i definitely agree that dignus house could be a better team with a coach but right now you don't touch things that are working like i i, sure. I sincerely believe that dignitas needs a coach but if you put a coach in right now it's a bad decision I okay. think that you should just leave them be, let them play until they start being until they talk until they start playing poorly. They hit or the slump again. The other, exactly. Yeah. Not necessarily a slump, but a ceiling, because we'll probably see these teams with dedicated coaches start performing higher. And you know, right now it's funny because TSM isn't winning and they have Zimstar and yeah, and, you know, Cognitive hasn't won and they have Maddie. Yep. So the the uh, the objective teams with coaches are better. Does it really work? out uh but it's definitely a big deal going forward and, and you know like i said if it ain't broke don't fix it but I, I i think having having a coach or somebody like that definitely brings the team up to a different level um but i you know it's it's not time for digging the to do that yeah fats um so let's go ahead and take a look at the eu team standings and fats you want to go ahead and go over those Open that up real quick. I was just focused on the Twitter sphere because it's the funniest, you funniest new account ever called DM Brandon's Alter Ego. Oh, they laughing. created that. I'm not surprised. Kind of the, laughing. The it just it tweeted at me and said, uh, "Well, at least you're better. You're a better smite player than me. Like, come on. <laughs> can you can you can, can you wake me? So it's Alter Ego. It's oh, it's a oh, nice God. DM. Alter Ego. Yeah, nice joke. DM. <laughs> No I, put it in the, is, I put it in the chat. Kind of <laughs> it's funny. Right? His first tweet is, I love Al Kwong. He's so easy to play and fun. I love Al the, I love the picture, by the him. way. I love the picture. So, so if you guys are uninitiated to the whole <laughs> Model um, Brandon. ego Twitter. Ego Twitter. Like, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's not something new to, It's not something Smite specific. It's, it's in a bunch of different it's scenes. It's a lot. Uh, it, it's been around and... And basically, what it is, it's a parody account. It's just a dumb parody account. Yeah. Like, uh, for those of you familiar with uh, the the other MOBA out there, the there's a guy named Monte MOBA. Cristo that does uh, that does analysis, and he's an associate with like CLG. Um, there's a there's an account Monte Cristo's ego, and uh. he just says like douchey things. And that's sort of like, <laughs> you know, that's what it is. Yeah. There's there are we have Wolfie's ego and Zadman's ego, which is Lastus has one too. Yep. Lazarus doesn't really fit. Lazarus doesn't need one. Like, He's such a Lazis nice guy. Like, Lazis... Zap having one is the best. Like, that's <laughs> hilarious. Can I tell you? So, Zapman's, Zapman's ego follows all the girls in the smite scene. <laughs> Are you surprised? I respect it. That is, I think that's the best joke. Shouldn't that be the best, made. though? That's pretty much the that's... best. Without a doubt. <laughs> I respect it. Come on now. Pro calling out the best there, We so were all at the it. launch tournament. Come on now. Come on now. Damn. I love well, you best. I love you, bro. Okay. All right, so let's look at EU. What do we got for EU? What are we looking at? Fats, this is where you go ahead and talk about the team standings for EU. I was actually looking at the, the, the following <laughs> scene. It was actually all the girls. Dude, he just follows like Moji, Kelly. Like, it's <laughs> only 10 girls. It's just 10 girls. Uh, I love it. I love it. That's too much. Anyway, um, we got Cloud9 first with 465. <sighs> Wow. TSM down a full 105 at 360. Yeah. yeah. Worth at 262. A Gilatos now at 190. My boys on I5, 167. And SK, because of their win today, up to 152. Oh, okay. Everyone under that is just 142, bloody tech, and everybody under that is under 100. So, I mean, as we get closer to the LAN event, top four is Cloud9, TSM Worth, and a Gilatos. SK's trying to make their breakthrough. Did well today, we saw. Yeah. So, I mean, Cloud9's basically secured their spot unless they lose. Don't place it all. Oh, yeah. I, I think they're a no-brainer. That'll be going to the LAN event. But I feel like, depending on how Team Solo Mid does over the next few weeks, for sure. I mean, look where they're at right now. 360, worth gaming. Pretty close there. Agilitas. I mean, I just feel like Cloud9 is Wait, defined. Who? Agilitas. Okay. Did I? I actually I said a Gilatas. Thank you. Way to correct me. But definitely, definitely second, third, and fourth right now. I feel like are so undetermined. Like they could go anyway. I five could have a, a, a happening two weeks and they do amazing. So, I think Cloud Nine has it without a doubt. What do you think? I've thought like, where do you see people at? They're going. Yeah. They're going. <laughs> Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine will go. I don't think like Cloud Nine. 
Can we shout to Cloud9 for being a consistent number two? Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> EU has been so volatile, you know. Freaking TSM wins. T- no name team yeah. number one wins. I5 doesn't win. Jiltaz <laughs> wins. Worth Gaming wins. Even SK, we thought they were God and they win. wins. And then everyone just beats Cloud9 in the finals. Like, that's just... For the most part, Cloud9 is just always number two. Shout out to consistency. Super res- yeah, like, it sounds yep. like I'm pooping on them, but to be consistently number two is... Is it a bad really, thing? Like, uh, It's a bad thing because <sighs> you're not winning. Kanye West is playing Rainbow Six. How much you want to bet that Scoobs? Okay. Wait, uh, what? Who? <laughs> uh, I, I, got, I got a notification on Steam. But so, uh, it's it's just... Uh, being consistently Wait, was it Big Daddy Doodles? Isn't, isn't a bad oh. thing. Yeah. Because it means you're doing something right consistently. Yep. Do you want to be no? Is it as is it as good as being number one? Of course not. But all these teams that come and win once, it doesn't mean anything. This is a Grand Prix, not a Super Bowl. Yeah. All right. You need to win multiple games, and if you come in, you know, if 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 you come in and win once, and then continue to place fourth, I don't care about you. Like, it's not going to win. Cloud9 HyperX is sitting 465 points by coming in second every week. They are doing it right. Like I said, could they be better? Of course. But shout out to SunTouch. Shout out to NQ. Shout out to Youngbae. Very cool dudes make up this team. And they're just consistently coming in second place. They're having a good time. And they are still... The beauty of it is... I'm saying how good it is to come consistently in second place. You see them on Twitter when they lose, and they're still upset about losing, and yeah. but they're not yep. putting themselves on tilt to where they can't make the finals. So I give a lot of respect to Cloud9, and Cloud9 is not a team... I'm super objective, but people always like to point out that I talk about Team Solo Mid because they exist <laughs> a lot. And, you know, I talk about specific teams a lot. I don't really talk about Cloud9 a lot. Nope. Nope, I'll and agree. And I... I'm super happy that, like, I, I, Cloud9 is one of my favorite teams right now because of how consistent they are working. My uh, my thoughts here, though, with Cloud9, like, I'm really happy about that, but I'm kind of, uh, um, I'm eager to see how they do at the LAN because they did not mm-hmm. do cre- really good at the LAN, you know, the launch event. Now, granted, there's been roster changes, without a doubt, and definitely... Um, you know, some uh, their, their morale is definitely up. I mean, consistently going to the grand finals of the online qualifiers is awesome, but I don't know. I'm just kind of concerned. What do you think, Fats, of Cloud9 at the land coming up here, you know, in, 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 in shortly? Cloud9 is effectively, as you said, securing a second place. Yep. So they've already, all the players who are on Cloud9 have been to the land event last time we had at the launch tournament. They've all had it with their other teams, but now they're all going to be together on one team that's effectively doing well for them. The yeah. acquisition of Young Bay and NQ is really proving to be what's setting them ahead of everybody else. I mean, NQ is a big idiot, and <laughs> Young Bay is So there's that. But, I mean, putting them back in a land environment after playing so long and already experience it once, because once you understand how lands work and you get readjusted to it, you'll be fine. Why do you think Dig performs so perfectly at lands? Because they are the land team. Yep. They are the smite oh, land yeah. team. That's they it. They are the, <laughs> the most land experience, without a doubt. So now you bring them back to it, they will be the EU smite land team. Effectively. Mm-hmm. I expect good things from them. I really do. Yeah. C9. Yeah. So before we go ahead and move on to the upcoming patch coming out here this week, any last comments on the esports at all this week? Any anything you guys want to touch on? NA, EU, anything like that? I all think right. that NA had some of the coolest stuff we've ever seen come out of our NA season this weekend. Uh, I think it's really solid stuff. I'm excited that NA got a little shaken up. I honestly, you know, something that I always talk about, and you can, every single Saturday, I tweet this, I tweet something like this out, not because I want to, but because I feel I have to. Dignitas is so much fun to watch. 
They just, I love, Lazarus is incredible. Zapman is just, Zapman, they're just fun to watch. And I can't wait until LAN events are more frequent. You yeah. Know, hopefully someday we'll become sort of like, uh, hopefully someday we'll become sort of similar to like other organizations where we have money that we can create LAN events more often. Yeah, that'd be nice. You know? Um, but... We're getting there. We're getting there. It's just, yeah, it's it's just it's just fun to watch go down, and you know, shouts to all the teams that won this week that aren't used to winning, so to speak. <laughs> <It's> nice, <laughs> so Kane. nicely said. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that's that's basically that's, that's, what it is. that's the realness, you know. Yeah. They're, you they're not know? used to having that first place victory yeah. over these teams that have always been and, considered the top threats. Yeah, and like, so last week I went really in on Shing, specifically Shing. Mm-hmm. For how he that. conducted his business with Snipe. Um, basically, what happened, Bats. The Wolfie situation? Quick recap. Quick recap for people that missed it or weren't aware. Wolfie no longer plays for Team Snipe. Yeah. And he was replaced without really telling him. It was done in a really under the table manner. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, yeah. really agree with the way that was handled. And I totally blasted Shing, and I stand by my guns. I feel yeah. that that was a really poor decision by Shing. Not necessarily getting rid of Wolfie. Personally, I feel like getting rid of Wolfie was a questionable decision. But as the, sure. as the leader yep. of that team, it's his right to make the decision. It's how it went down that I wasn't a fan yeah. of. But one thing that I'll never question with, when it comes to Shing, and I respect him just as much as I dislike the way he handled Wolfie, <laughs> is, is that he wants to win and his drive to win has never stopped he's mm. gotten discouraged we saw like he stopped streaming for a while and he was yeah upset once cog took their once cog switched to teams and mm -hmm. they become snipe again that was a big deal but shing has never thrown in the towel shing has never said no I w I'm, I'm done shing wants to win shing will try to win shing will replace good friends because he wants to win sure he doesn't he handled that situation poorly and i won't back down from the statement sorry that sucks. well i think everyone can agree everyone but can like, agree yeah but 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 just the desire to win the desire to do anything to win even if it pisses people off i respect that because this game you know like this is a sport and sometimes business comes into play it's not just a game it's a business as well mm -hmm. you know like yeah but see uh and once thing. once snipe is picked up by whoever organization picks him up professionalism is going to come into play a lot more and i think shing's going to learn a lot but right now well, right now to be honest with you shing's too young to be running that team i'll put I it out there i completely disagree i completely disagree. he knows what it has to he take has... to win but he's not professional at all he doesn't understand the mechanics behind it like yeah, about your image and everything. I mean, there, there was one thing about winning, but once you get picked up from an organization, there's more than just winning. Well, Shing doesn't have a problem with his image. I don't, like, <laughs> people, people, oh, Shing snipes my stream and wins and ghosts, and, yeah, you know, Shing's yeah. the one with the sub emote for ghosting. Like, it's, <laughs> at this point, it's sort of a joke. It's like Kramer yeah. being upset that people make fun of his hair. Like, it's just <laughs> part of him at this point, right? And, and so I, I feel like, Image is not an issue with Shing. The the I I don't like the way he does the business aspect of the team. If he got picked up by an organization, that wouldn't even be in his wheelhouse. So I, yeah, there's no problem. With that's that. true. You know, Shing isn't like a racist dude. No, no, I don't know. I'm not saying that for like, sure. Like, Shing doesn't nah, have an image problem. Shing's racist. <laughs> Shing doesn't have an image problem. And I think that's super super important. And I also think it's super important that professionalism. See, is it necessarily required? See, you're just like the guy in chat. Does Octane Pro know that they're not sponsored? Why does Shing have to make it professional? I'm sorry, but I have more respect for the esports scene than that. I expect the teams that are in the spotlight, that are winning, that are in the top four, that are going to these LAN events to have professionalism. I have a little more respect for that to be like, here, he's like, it's kind of illogical. I'm like, no. Hey, you want to go play your child game? Go play your League of Legends or your Dota 2. Like, to me, Damn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I have more respect for the players where, like, when I meet them in person, I want to see it. I don't like that. I'll say it. I don't like that bullshit. Like, I'm sorry. That's not an excuse. God damn. Oh. I'm sorry. Like, I hate it. I like this Octane Pro. You Yo, are. Octane. I love it. Yes. You're going in. And, and no, and that, that passion is cool. I, I, and, I you know, you. I see where you're coming from. <laughs> I no, see where good. you're coming from. If I'm going to watch a team and I'm going to root for a team, I kind of want them to seem more like the Yankees than five sure. dudes at the park. Sure. Sure. I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, 
I don't necessarily subscribe to the same thought process. I, I, I think it's what I think one of the cooler things about esports is that there's no there's no psychological uh, there's no there's no genetic lottery. Yeah. Um, you know, I can play basketball all my life. Guess what? I'll never be a six foot nine, two hundred fifty pound black man. All three of us. Wrong. All three of us. Same thing. <laughs> that's that's, that's on the way. That's the story. I have the advantage here. I'm Yo, black. You got. The you got. All right. All right. You're ahead Halfway of the game. There. You're ahead of the game, bro. You're ahead of the game. <laughs> you're there. hanging all day on bars to get through. Yeah. Game. Right. He's taking the steroid shots. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to grow. Bro. But. Uh, it's on the but way. so you know, the beauty of esports is yeah. the fact that five nerds in chat, I can pick up Wagner, Love, Love, Hollinger, Marth Fox, Hawkeyes, and Zegzanic, and they could play twenty hours a day <laughs> and be a pro team. I don't know who they are, what they do. You know, as long as you're not like racist, sexist, hateful. Like I don't really care what you do. If you want to smoke cigarettes on stream, that's not what I'm down with. But go ahead. It's you know, whatever you do, that's you, and you get a very real, raw person. And I think that's cool. Um, like I said, the, so I don't think the way Shing handled Wolfie was a problem for the scene or getting picked up. I just think it was really crappy to handle a team like that. I wouldn't do that myself. Exactly. Oh, but, I completely agree. You, know, I, you like, don't, do, you that, know, you don't and, do that to your friend or your teammate. Or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if they're friends, but at least to your teammate. You don't pull that. Like, come on. Yeah, now. Exactly. And that, in all honesty, like, all respect, Shing, you're a great player and all, but that's a childish move. Like, go to Woofy and be like, yo, we're going to try. As Woofy said, he was like, if he came to me and was like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and try something different tonight. We want to see how it works out. We've been in a slump. Woofy was like, that would have been fine. But the fact that you go behind a man's back, like, come on now, that's childish. Like, be a man. Man up. Talk to the guy. Tell him how the things are going. Yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, I... I, I... I won't disagree with that. I definitely won't disagree with that, Octane. But I, I, I think that Shing, you know, in his mind, which is why I disagree with the way it was done, but I don't yeah. fault him. It's just... As you said, he wants to win. And I, okay. Yeah, he just I'll give him that. I'll give him that. I respect that. Sure. I respect that a lot. Oh, why'd you time out the guy that called me a douche? I'm totally a douche. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, you time but, uh... out every person that calls me a douche. I don't care. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, any last any last comments on that, or can we move on? We good? Yeah, no, we we we, we can move on. Like I said, I, I all right. I just you know I'm He's very happy <laughs> that Snipe won. Yeah, I'm very happy that Snipe won. They've earned it, and despite the fact that I disagree with the way Shig has handled things in the past, I like his met I like his mentality, if not his methodology, and I am very happy that he finally won because Shig has been putting work in to win. For a while, long time. Long, 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 I, I think Shing has been putting in consistent effort for the longest time out of anybody that hasn't won yet. Yeah. I really think that Shing and there. Snipe have put in work and deserve this win so hard. So I'm just finally happy that they won. I, I, I think they deserve it despite some of the mistakes that they've made along the way. So 10 points to Snipe. Very excited that you guys won. 100 yeah. points to Snipe. <laughs> Actually, 100, yeah. yeah. 100 points. All right. 100 points to Snipe for, you know, winning. Great job. And, and same, to, same to SK. I really give you guys a lot of credit. You lost your star player at NQ. NQ was one of the best solo laners yeah. in the entire game. He went to a arguably better team. You guys picked somebody up. You just picked yourself up from the ground, and you just kept going. And Perseverance is king apparently because you just won and a lot of people not just douchey talking heads like me but a lot of people in the shadow sphere doubted you for a long time oh, and yeah. i'm happy as hell that sk has proven a lot of people wrong so just big shout outs to everybody that's won this week well earned well deserved and i'm happy we saw a shake up this week hell yeah so let's go ahead and move on to the upcoming patch. Those of you guys not familiar, High Res has kind of gone ahead, and, and Chris talked about this a little bit, how they've changed up when they're releasing patches and utilizing the PTS a little bit more. Um, so, you know, the patch information was released. Was that Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. The information was released. Or was it Thursday? Somewhere in there. No, Friday's patch notes. Friday was patch notes. Okay, I knew it was somewhere in there. But Hira, or Chris had <laughs> said, you know, Friday they're going to go ahead, release the content, talk about it on stream with um, Kelly, 
uh, with Dry Bear and Bart, and then they're going to go ahead and u utilize the PTS now more and more, which is awesome. I'm so happy about that. And then they're going to go ahead and release that patch the upcoming week. So uh, we have all the information here, and we're kind of going to go over it and discuss it. And I'll throw it over to Fats to kind of highlight some of the big things. We won't go over the entire patch at all. We don't have time for that. But go over some of the larger things that are more important to talk about. So go for it, Fats. Of course, we'll just start with our new god, uh, Rom. R-A-M-A, -A, pronounced Rom. Ra. Okay. The first Hindu hunter. And, and, shut up, shut up, enough, 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 please. Yep, what do you got? Thank, thank you. <laughs> so serious. This is, saying that, this is for saying random people in the chat were more favorited than me, okay? We have drama already. Let's leave that there. So, Rom is a very... Uh, <laughs> Just go. I'm singing that Adele it. song, Rolling in the Deep. Just go. Enough. Stop talking about rolls. We get it. We'll get there in a second. All right. Rom is a very Roll different... Out. Oh, my God. Yo, should we Roll mute him? Rain. Should we just mute him? Or just mute him. <laughs> just mute him. Rom is a very different hunter in this game. Oh, yeah. All right? How he works is he has his passive, which is called Astral Quiver. Uh, Astral, uh, Rom's Astral Quiver generates an Astral Arrow every 15 seconds. Also, every basic you land, whether it be on uh, Enemy God or Minion or Jungle Creep, whatever, reduces cooldown by two seconds so you get arrows faster just by landing basics. It's awesome. Rolling, I think it's a... Rolling, rolling, I think rolling. it's... it's <laughs> What's the three? What's the three do? What's the three oh, do? stop it. I think... Okay, talk about that first. I think it's a really cool mechanic. I, I think it's a really cool mechanic to end in the game. Trash boy. <laughs> What's the number three do? Uh, the number uh... one, all right, uses your astral arrows... Yep. All right, to become piercing shots, goes through walls, is a slow as it's well, sick. does it's bonus sick. damage, it's costs sick. an arrow, and no mana. Remember that, all right? That's Two. a big deal, actually. That is a very big deal. It's ridiculous. I've played him on the PTS. It's a very big deal. Are there any other gods? I'm just thinking of time I have. I'm trying to think. Are there any other gods that has an ability that can be used that doesn't cost mana? Like, I'm just... Everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm trying to think because it's Stop definitely everything. that's definitely like a new mechanic to the game where you're able to use an ability and it uses no mana at all whatsoever. Now, granted, with Chalk, as you said, like, there's you earn it, I guess you could say, and I guess that's the same thing here. I'm just trying to think, like, there isn't really anyone else that it really gets to. I think it's yeah, a cool... no, it's, it's it's basically Chalk, Agni, and yeah, that's what I thought about. Not really Thanatos. Okay. Because you definitely can become no manathos, but <laughs> Thanatos so uses a lot less either. mana. So. Yeah. Okay. 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 I was just wondering. Go for it. What else we got? Well, what the two does is whenever you have your one active and you shoot an arrow, you have a chance of dropping that arrow on the ground so you can re-pick it up. So you have that arrow more readily available the next time you're going to shoot it. And it's at, that's just a passive. It's active. Is in attack speed, you know, steroid real quick. 50% mm -hmm. at max rank. Cooldown 11 seconds, pretty good. Last five seconds, really good ability. Um, all right, and then here's a three. Right. Rolling, <laughs> rolling, rolling down the river. All right, all right, happy. You guys happy? Let him happy. Like a rolling, yeah. all right. rolling assault. Rom performs a roll that is not CC immune. Thank God. Everybody understand that. Thank God. I try to roll through things like an idiot. <laughs> I, 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 I try to roll through a Hercules. No. Poseidon's whirlpool. <laughs> no. <laughs> try to roll out through a Kraken from one head to the other, and I held that. <laughs> Perform the roll in any direction, okay? And then after performing the roll for the next five seconds, if you shoot an in hand and you have an arrow available, now you need to have one of your astral arrows available. If you have one available, you will shoot an arrow, and it will cripple, not root. And it took me like 10 seconds to realize that they were different because I hate Scylla. Not root, but cripple whoever you're attacking for one scaling to two full seconds and deals bonus damage. Rom incurs no movement penalty during this cripple shot. So you can use it as a retreating move and not have the back panel penalty at all. Safe move. And then, I mean, it's cool. It's eight-way directional. I put it on Instacast so I can just dip when time comes. <laughs> yeah. I can still That's shoot awesome. and then roll when it has to happen. It's kind of hard because three is, like, above here, so you got to, like, put your thumb <laughs> magic in there somehow. But it's still cool. Yeah. The ultimate. 
ultimate is weird. I gotta say that much. It like, definitely reminds me like a little bit of Freya's ultimate. Just no, it's nowhere near. Like I, I, I'll be honest with you guys. Like I was away. I, well, I was away for like the past four days. I haven't touched this at all. I've just watched it. But from watching it, I can say to be honest with you, it very much reminds me of Freya a little bit. Just the way that that interacts, yeah. but it. I love the fact that it, that I'll let you go over, but I love the fact of how it it, it alters as. Well, I'll results. tell you why it's not like Freya's. Please so do. Let me go Please over do. it first. Go for it. All right, ultimate astral barrage launches into the air. It's it has a decent startup where he has to throw his bow up and then he jumps up to grab it. Okay. Kind of Dragon Ball Z ish, kind of hype, but he shoots three powerful arrows at the ground. First one, big AOE circle, does fifty percent damage. Second one. Little smaller, does seventy five percent. The third one, real tiny, about the size of Geb. It's pretty pretty good big model right there anyway. Maybe Sobek is a better one. Um does you know that scaling damage fifty percent, seventy percent, a hundred percent. Last in the air for five seconds. So even if you don't shoot at all, you're only up there for five seconds. Alright? And it only costs a hundred scaling to one forty mana and he doesn't use mana on his one at all. He is a very not hungry for mana character, and that's why he's kind of godlike. But the problem here is, you jump in the air, you think you don't get hit. I killed him with brutalize. What? How's that work? What did you just like? Like in the air? Like he, I brutalized. He ulted. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Oh. <laughs> that probably huh. sounds like a bug. Like it's a bug. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. It was funny. Okay. It was funny. Did you imagine his face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, get him out of here! Oh, oh. Have you ever seen the famous... It, it's it's really insensitive these days, so I'm not going to link it, but there was once an old Counter-Strike video called uh -huh. Pwned. I've not do you seen, remember the video? I do not recall it. Oh, wow. But it, it just... It, it was it was basically a kid getting beat. It was an animation. And, okay. And it was a kid getting beaten. It was, he was like, my god, you hacksers. Like, my god was a hacking <laughs> clan back then. And he just makes this noise. Uh... It's just like the sound of nerd rage. I'll link it Are to you about that down. kid who was like slamming on his keyboard and stuff? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. The angry and... German kid? The angry German. It, it, it's an animation. It's an animation. But okay. Okay. that noise is what that kid made. He did... That my noise? God! <laughs> that noise is also the new noise on Metal Cartage Fenrir's jump. Oh, <laughs> word. Anyway, Yo. So, Fenrir finally has Mecha Fenrir. That's cool. That's cool. The only ability that has really been changed is his one, and he does this really cool jump <laughs> with this transformer noise. That's that cool. is pretty dope. So, can we... Uh... Bart revealing patch notes is, I think it's the whole, most hilarious thing in the world. Everybody can, oh, he's too slow. I, 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 I think Bart doing patch notes is great. And, but one thing that I love to see, one thing that I love to see is that Bart does this for a living. Like, this is his real job to do smite. You know, yeah. he, 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 like, works at high res studios. Da, 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 da. There's no, like... And sleeps there and everything. <laughs> like, homie works a lot. He works very hard. Yep. There's no, like, disillusionment. We watched, we got to watch Bart play the Mecha Fenrir skin and, like, see the jump for the first time. And Bart legitimate, like, the ex same exact expression that everyone in chat had when they saw the, the jump, Bart had, because it was the first time he saw it. <laughs> Have you seen it? He was freaking out. It was hype. Have you seen it, Octane? You... I, I have like not. I have not. Okay. It's so yeah. dope. I, trust me, like, like I didn't have a chance to see that because I was traveling right. when they were doing that. And I'm like, dang, you know what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm throwing that entire yeah, like... stream up on another <laughs> monitor and watching that entire recording because I'm excited. Like, there's a lot of the stuff that I haven't seen yet, so I'm, I'm eager about it. Yeah. So but, that's uh, a new skin. That 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 alone just sold the skin to me because it was hype. The, the another jump, skin to buy. Like, I haven't even played another skin. Oh, neither do I. I don't touch him, but I'm gonna buy it anyway. The jump is dope. Also, yeah, wait, irony. Wait. Oh, you got something? Uh, I was gonna let you go, but I'm definitely gonna take over there because <laughs> of what you just said. Uh, the Fenrir jump. The Fenrir jump. When Bart. So so what he does, Octane, is he jumps right and he makes the transformer noise yeah. and like he turns from a dog into like. Like a dart. So it's like, like his body it's weird. Like transforms. I'm to just like guessing the noise is like the 
or whatever that yeah, noise yeah, it's is. Like yeah, that. but he his body turns into like a a dart to be you know more like aerodynamic. He goes okay, Whoa! like interesting. Whoa! I love okay, it. Dude. Okay, okay. No. <laughs> you come, you know, and so he did, and like everybody in chat was like, "Whoa, that's so cool!" But Bart was like, "All right, here we go." We, oh, <laughs> that's so cool! Like exactly what you do when you go buy a new video game and like you realize you could like devil may cry people to death. Like you just do something. You're like, wow, that's so cool! Like. That's the exact uh, thing that Bart had. Bart's been working on Smite for like two plus years. He doesn't hate it. He just loves it. I yeah. think that's awesome. Like, I think that's so cool that we all had the same experience. Not just the, the dev guy on camera, but like, you know, Nerd47 in chat and Bart had the same exact experience. I thought yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but, okay, Fats, you had something else to say. Just have more new skins. Go for yeah, it. Course. Tell us about it. Let's talk about it. Uh, Raw America. Woo! That's kind of cool. the best skin ever. I like where the best skin ever. I like where the skin ever. Yeah, I like where the um, uh, And also, it's, it's the first skin that's 500 gems. Yeah. Well worth it, though. Weird number. Mainly because for each sale of the skin, $2 will be donated to the American Red Cross. It is a seasonal skin available only till the 14th of July. But $2 to the Red Cross... American That's raw. Cool. That's cool. I like when to see more of that. the is raw America. <laughs> <laughs> you know like, what? I I am going to say Also, it. no, 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 wait, wait. Go for it. His voice pack, his woohoo, <laughs> he goes, you s a you s a you It's the hypest thing in the world. <laughs> it's, can I, like, I'm going to say. Ask anybody oh. that gets in a random game with me. <laughs> I like to just chant USA in chat That's when awesome. I do something cool. Like I, like, I get a good gank and I'm just like, USA, USA. And I usually get muted, but whatever. Yeah. I hate you anyway. But, That's like, right. now I can actually do it <laughs> in game. <laughs> All right. What I was going to say was, I'm going to say it right now. Do not complain about the cost of this skin. No one is forcing you to buy it. Oh, I do yeah. not want to see people complaining and making threads on it about Reddit. It's too expensive. The justification of XYZ versus this skin, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 it goes to charity. So, I don't think they'll do it for <laughs> so shove it. That's all I'm going to say. Please continue. I don't on. think this would be the skin to do that on. I, the, you're just... talking about the uh, Apollo yep, problem. Yep, all the yeah, way. That was completely different. I mean, I can saying... see why people were upset about that because they're babies. <laughs> and the skin didn't have as much effects as this skin does, and there's not a new voice back and all yep. that. Yep. That's why. This has a new voice back, American Red Cross. You, you drop the solar blessing, it's American flag in the sky, and it always faces wherever you are. So That's it's baller. Like super patriotic That's baller. Guy. Also, Iron Gamer Thor, if you guys don't know about Iron Gaming, they are a company who runs their own tournaments, little, little LAN events, and now they're starting to run Smite and high reses taking them under the wing and teaching them the ways of the Smite World Championship stuffs. We are... And if you buy this skin, which is, just so you guys know, it's just a Thor recolor. Yeah. But it's 400 gems. It's pretty cool. And it supports esports. Yeah. I will have to say, uh, we talked about this, actually. I think it was with FDOT and Wolfie, maybe, or I forget where we talked about it. We talked about the fact of Hi-Riz doing more of these... Yeah, it was last week with Wolfie. We talked about the fact of high res going ahead and doing more involvement to help feed some of these other tournaments. So, you know, with TSM. Uh, and it was actually something I talked about with David Fry. We were talking about the fact of so ways in order to help source and fund these tournaments that are coming up, like TSM. And he had said very much so, if we can have like five tournaments a year that are like 25 grand and then have two big ones that high res runs, the scene is going to be more sustainable for pro players, for sponsors, for organizations. And we're moving in the right direction. Right here, we have TSM Invitational, which we don't have much detail on quite yet. And now we're going to go ahead and see Iron Game which can now be funded as well so i mean think about it if this is it's only been the past few months we've seen this i'm really eager to see the direction we move in having you know if over a year span we have five let's say we have five different skins out there that benefit tournaments i think it's a great way as as they had said before you know it's crowdsourcing you know and i think it's great yeah. for the prize pool i think it's excellent i i i too think it's really cool the idea of of splitting proceeds of something in game isn't exactly brand new. Yeah. But nope. I do like the frequency Hello, that Dota. doing it. Yeah. It's really sweet. It's yeah. really cool. Um, and yeah, I, I think Brandon, the tournament you were talking about earlier, Fats, with yeah. uh, like three members of Juice and then Kret and Peckies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
They uh, that was an Iron Gaming Conan episode. Yeah. Yeah. They That's run awesome. their their events on uh, Saturday or yeah. Sundays. And 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 Shadow Boy actually Shadow Boy who is a caster for Smite Central. Uh, some of you, I, I know there's a couple of Shadow Boy fans out there. Yeah. Shadow Boy actually casts the Iron Gaming stuff. So they do have people that you may. Who's casting it with him now that Pecky's is playing in it? Uh, today. Yeah, I was just thinking about know. that. Okay. I, I I slept through a message asking me to cast it. Okay. Okay. Um. I know, yeah, I know some of the... I'm going to yeah. blame Jeff Hindala for that. That's all Jeff Hindala's fault. <laughs> so, yeah. I blame Jeff Hindala. But, you know, other than that, uh, I don't know who casted with him today, but... I'm going to say I am excited that Iron Gaming is partnering with hi -Rez in order to learn a little bit from hi -Rez regarding uh, running some of these Smite tournaments. I think there were some things in question originally when they first came into the scene, and it just wasn't going a good direction. And I'm kind of happy it's starting to move in that direction right now. We'll just put it like that. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. What else we got, Fats? Valiant one Rom, of course, his new recolor going from his blue to orange. I like yep. the orange way better. Mm -hmm. I think his recolor is way better than his original. Gold Osiris is in the game. New Ward skins, East Island Head, Squidward's wait, 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 house. Blue to orange? I'm... What? Fats. Who's blue to orange? What are you talking about? What was the first skin you talked about? He just talked about Rom. how he Rom's has skin color. Oh, Rob, Rob, yeah, Rom. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, Rom's I original mean. color is blue, and now with this one, he changed the orange. Yeah. So if you don't like Smurfs, switch over. Um, <laughs> new Ward skins, yep. eat, uh, Squidward's house, Squidward's and Sword's house. house. <laughs> And also country flag player icons, which some of the EU players there's have no said Austria. are wrong. <laughs> so there's, no, that. there's no Austria. I think it's the Norwegian flag that's just wrong. Yeah. There, there's some people. There's some people upset. We'll just put it that way. There's some people like, upset. Like what? I I mean, but they're upset for legitimate reasons. It'll be fixed by the time it goes live this week. You know, it's it like will. if they put up you a know. Mexican flag and said, "Here you go, Americans. How do you do?" Oh like, my word, that would be the worst. That would be. There'd I'd be buy so it. Much, I'd be like, "Yo, let's go." There'd America. be so much BM. Oh my word, that'd be so bad. <laughs> can we talk about? Can we talk about player icons and how I owned the old school Hercules icon, and then during the rework, my Hercules icon got changed to the new Hercules oh, icon. Go and cry with the, the rest one, of the Hercules people. Money. No, I actually think that's whack. So, I actually think that's whack. I purchased a Hercules icon because he looks like a member of the Bee Gees. He's got long hair and a beard. I thought it's funny. He kind of looks like my dad. And then, like, the new Hercules? He's mean. That's the icon I'll never use. He's a bully. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Alright. <clears throat> uh, updated cards for on hers. Uh... Lion King skin yeah. and Al Kong's uh, Happy New Year skin and Hades' is bloody blood fire skin. Yeah, it looks Some like more that. spectator updates and HUD. You get, now you get HUD customization. Woo! You change how your HUD looks and stuff like that. That's Pretty baller. neat. I think it's weird, but whatever. So <laughs> um, I am... It's like the last, spectator the last spectator change they made. It was kind of a little, you know, kind of caught us off guard. But this one's quite unique, without a doubt. I am I am super happy. I don't know. So League of Legends, you can mod with outside third party stuff, just mm -hmm. like an MMO, to make your UI different. I think I for in game or just spectator. For in game. Oh, that's kind of that's just opening the door for like hacking issues. Uh, yes and no. I mean, so if you come from the MMO world, you know that there are a lot of mods out there that yep. generally a lot of times you just like clean up your UI. Like, the, like for example, with World of Warcraft, your action bars are at the bottom and they have, like, eagles on them and yeah. stuff. When I play WoW, I put bar mods in and so I just see my icons and they're usually towards the top. Yep. You know? Yep. Like, so it's, it's more like quality of life stuff. And then every once in a while you have, like, every once in a while you have, uh, a, you have mods that make the game easier but aren't necessarily hacks. So, like, if I'm, if I'm playing a character that has to put up, like, damage over time spells on a boss yeah. and keep it up 100% of the time, I can have a timer in the middle of my freaking screen counting down the seconds till it's over. And Making the game fun. easier for you, yeah, yeah, I understand. So, that makes the game easier for you, but it, it's not <laughs> cheating because... It's just holding your hand. Just holding your hand. Exactly. Like, how else are you going to get that information? Because, you know? So, with League of Legends, it's sort of the same stuff. You see a lot of the mods, like Paper Bat... Uh, one of my favorite Smite game streamers. Actually, I really like the late the late night Smite game streamers like Fats to Paperbat. I I, I think are, it's great.
But anyway, um, Paper Bat plays a little bit of League, and his mods are, like, the, the whole UI is, like, very minimal. It's, like, mm. his health and mana bar, his abilities, and, you know, it's pretty cool. With Dota, they have, like, in-game stuff that just kind of, like, changes what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But I think this is awesome, and I'm not sure if I like it. I <laughs> I, I will say this first, and I'll throw it to Fats. Moving, this is fine for Spectator, but moving forward, I do not want to see mods touch at all the in-game type of stuff. I do not want to see that in my game. I'll put What's it out that? there. I don't. I think it takes away from the game itself. It takes away from the skill of the game. I mean, I'll be honest with you. WoW is just rinse and repeat, and it's easy mode. It's training wheels now. I played. Bad. I played WoW. I played WoW back in the day when it was vanilla. Blah blah blah. But and you never I'm played sorry. WoW. Well. I'm sorry, dude. You can shut up. I I am so, just gonna say. What I don't was like, what was what was your record like, kills? What I, was your record kills? I played the game to enjoy the game, and I didn't. Yeah, play I got the training wheels. thirty kills. It's not easy. All right. I don't know what this conversation's about. <laughs> Anyways, I what, do what not. Is, I will say is I do not want to see training wheels in Smite. I think it takes away from the authenticity what do you mean of training the game. Wheels? What do you mean? By training wheels, where you can add mods into the game to give you timer updates, flashing up on screen. Oh, that. All of a oh, yeah. Garbage like we that. Like that. I, I don't want to see. I don't want to see more of that. Is what I'm saying. It's, I don't want to see. It's already in the game. From outside sources. Though. It's already in the game. What do you mean outside, outside sources? sources. I mean, it's Her, probably going to happen. That's I know, I know, today. and I can say. I mean, you, you, but, 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 but them but, putting but, it in but, the game themselves. I mean, but, it but, eliminates but, the point but, of other people but, doing but, it. But, 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 timers are already in the game. I know, but what I'm saying Polynomicon, is Polynomicon, like when you use Polynomicon, you uh, and it comes up. Yes, timer. you can see it. Yes, I'm understanding that. And part of me didn't like that that direction it went. I'm sorry, but I like the game to be hard. And from a perspective, I'm from a perspective where it comes down to like, okay, you want to go ahead and excel at this game. You play the game a ton. You, 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 you master certain objectives of the game. Part of that comes with like the jungling before where you, where you went ahead and it came down to playing the game a ton, knowing when those jungles were going to be back up. Nothing told you that until without, you know, and that's where I come from. That's where I really, really like it. I'm not, I don't like it where the direction it would go as like where you said League of Legends. That's just my opinion. All right, now granted, you know, as you said, cool spectator mode, stuff like that. That's awesome. I think that's cool. Spectator mode all the way. But in-game, eh, that's just my opinion. I'd rather not see it. So, so, when it comes to, I actually am kind of the opposite. Okay. I don't like changes to the spectator mode because I want a consistent viewing mm -hmm. for all viewers. Whether it's Iron Gaming or Smite or I can see some it. other company I can or see like Fats's local 3v3 tournament, I want every spectator client to look the same. Because what happens is, um, you know, and and uh, you know, I'm not gonna poop on Fats, but like let's say Fats runs a 3v3 tournament mm -hmm. and he makes his spectator UI to what he thinks is great, yeah. and it's absolute ass. But the tournament he puts on is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. Be, <laughs> yeah, I like consistency. Gonna, I agree. It's gonna be loved a lot less than it should be because the spectator is ass, but Fats put in a lot of work and thought it looks cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he put on a ball and tournament, but nobody cares because yeah. nobody can see the gold count or something random. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But in game, so like, I I don't want things that tell you like Sobex flip is up in three. Yeah, like I don't yep. want that crap. Yeah, but I I really down with the idea of minimalization. Um, I hate, like, the UI team does a great job at high res I would love to hide their work. Like, it sucks. I feel really bad for any UI team <laughs> of any game that I play because I don't want to see their work. I think it looks really sweet. Yeah. Like, shouts to Blizzard. I think the Blizzard UI looks really cool, but I don't want to look at Eagles. I have, I have a 24-inch monitor, and everything on my 24-inch monitor should be game information. Like, I'm a, you know, you know me, I'm competitive. Mm -hmm. Like, so I want to, I want to be able to like move my, my, I want to, honestly, perfect world. I would move my, uh, four spells right underneath my character. So I have my cooldowns right there and my eyes don't have to deviate from the set center of the map of, of, of the game. And I could put my map at the top so that my eyes have to move one inch rather than six inches to the right. That sounds really lame. That's called efficiency. And I like that. I like that a lot. And two casual players it helps streaming like i can make my layout be whatever the hell i want and still let everybody see my stuff 
which yeah. is cool, you know? So That's neat. I, yeah, like I like the idea. I really like the idea of UI changes as long as it stays in game. Like I said, when it comes to when it comes to outside mods, I'm torn on that because as an MMO player, I totally see the see the the I like mods and I like that they exist. But when it comes to a like a game like Smite is closed, mm -hmm. in the sense that you know it's like a Call of Duty game. You just load up in a lobby. You don't like build a character throughout time. Yeah. Yep. So, I feel a little more hesitant on introducing mods to games like that. But if they're mods to, like... Like, if you can make a mod... If, if, if you can install a mod that makes your... If you can make a mod that makes your minimap ghost mode, like, transparent, and take over your entire screen, that's an interesting mod that I don't think makes the game easier, but could be player preference. And okay, I'm I okay can with that, I, I can I'm not I, I can agree with you on that on that level on that level for sure. I mean yeah. I I can see that and maybe moving some things around that's fine. But yeah. once you start to get into some items that definitely, for example, like if you kind of like with WoW, like a hunter, like gives you the exact time and the exact time to hit something. Like to me, like I don't want to join a team fight and have something flash up on my screen and be like hit four now. Like, I don't well, want to see no, that type there, of stuff. Well, there's no... There's nothing in Smite that does that. Correct, but that's what I'm just saying. Like, I don't... Because, I, so, like, those types of mm -hmm. things are, like, procs. In the mm -hmm. sense that you can only use yeah. ability 6 after ability 7 crits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, that type of stuff... Like, A, it, a separate topic in MMOs that's totally warranted because you, like, can't see your crits. So you kind of have to yeah. know that. Yeah. Um, and it's given to you... But, and, like, it's given to you in the UI. And I think that's important. Anything mm -hmm. that... Hi-Res Studios gives to you should be able to be if they're going to do mods should be able to do be modded in whatever way the player feels fit yeah. like when you're playing an MMO and a giant thing pops up on your screen at the bottom in the horrible UI art the the, the <laughs> icon will light up yeah. like it will light up so the blizzard gave you that information yeah. the mod just put it in the middle of your screen yeah. so I have no beef with that and if the, so like if they put a polynomicon timer in the middle of your freaking screen I don't have a problem with that because hi has already provided you the information. Mm. So as long as you, as long as you um, have the available information that hi gives you, I have no problem with any mods. But once mods start bringing outside information in, mods that track enemy cooldowns, then we have beef. Yeah, so yeah, makes sense. I'm really, I'm really cool with in-house custom UI where you can move things and you can change the size of things. With the idea of outside player developer made mods, I'm fuzzy on it. But if it gives the same information that Hi-Rez gives you, I can get behind it. I just will absolutely start a <laughs> riot and burn down every single forum and Reddit if anybody ever makes a mod that allows you to track enemy cooldowns or information that isn't provided to you by Hi-Rez. Yeah, think that's a I like it. Deal, so. I like it, for sure. Fats, what else we got moving on? Unless you got some comments on mods. No. <laughs> all right. Y'all just had like a half an hour discussion about mods. That's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it off camera. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> hey, fat, right. fat kid's got to uh, eat. It's all good. All right, let's 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 go fast. Let's go fast. Free God rotation changed. Hubwa gave Sun Wukong on her best. That account security now is a thing. When you log into the game, they will force you to have a security question and answer. I like it. Good they call. will force you to have this. Item builder stuff, nobody even uses that. Oh, I agree. <laughs> Watching the Twitch stream will no longer mute match notification sounds. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, blah, 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 bot stuff, league, leaderboard stuff, fixes, game modes, modified match lobby to have the highest MMR player on the team always oh, snap. in the top position. That didn't last long. Which means... That didn't last long. <laughs> that top elo will always be top elo and everybody else will still be dumb everyone else is gonna be randomized and it Wait, also basically says that yes there was random mmr in no, league no no so in league it was only random mmr if i was on the bottom mm. if i was on top then it was totally elo based but if i was last elo then it was obviously randomized oh yeah 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 you know yeah 
for F dot. That was an F dot. Hey, I have, dude. I have an eight million Elo, and you can't even check. So you have an eight million Elo pots. That's Damn right. No. What, what nobody check. What, nobody what check. What nobody league check. are you in, bro? What uh, league are you in? No, no, don't check. Don't check. Over one. Yo, two, fats, eight? fats is all, fats is all big Where man. Am fats I is at? all big oh, man Mr. now. Platinum. Yo. Mr. Platinum. Yo, when they Wait, fix platinum? it, when they fix the Yo, system, the come on. Yo, the jump from bronze three to plat three. Made no. <laughs> <laughs> you know so what? Bad. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call out high res Chris right now. Chris, I want to see chill, an explanation chill, chill. on no Reddit, snitch. bro. No snitch. Don't tell. Him. Let's go. Let's no go. Plan. I want to see the explanation because he can go back and look at the history no, and where it came from. Yes, he can. All I know is is, I is, is just. I hope he fixes it. Oh, that was a glitch. Let me fix that. Back on. Oh my god. Okay, this is the best thing in the world. Right. This is the best change ever. Lobby trading. When trading God, the enter key will no longer accept trades. Oh, that's good. You will so. see. You will see. That matters you to me see. because I always get into a game with like somebody who wants to troll me, like Jesse last night <laughs> trolled me and kept trying to trade me her Geb for my freaking Hercules, and uh, I I like the type a lot. So I'm about to press enter and it chatty, pops up and I almost Kathy, traded with three seconds left and that would have ruined the game. Oh. Uh, all right. That's cool. Cool little fix there. It works. New item, which means Chuck Mid is a thing. Oh, Ch God. Ch 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 Chuck Mid has always been a thing. <laughs> Y'all just that suck. That's a bigger thing. Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, then. Yep. I can't pronounce it. Ankle. Just call it Aviche, like the DJ. <laughs> Avicii? Avicii? You know that? Ah, sometimes. All right. Ankle. I get a good feeling. All right, enough. Yeah. Enough. Oh, my God. I get a feeling that I love it. That was actually pretty good, I guarantee you. Go ahead. What do you got? Give it, tell, tell us about this new item. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has to have a clown on their show. We have one God right here. God damn, you were stupid, and it's the hypest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't starving, I'd be, I'd be in on this. But um, new item. 20 physical power, 60 magical Ooh. protection. Okay? Passive. You permanently gain 0.5 physical power. And 0.25% cooldown yes. reduction per you stack. You know this is getting changed. Come on, man. Max 60 God. stacks, and it only costs 2400 You think it's going to stay like this when it releases this week? I'm down to see Chalk and <laughs> I'm down to see that you. Oh, if they're looking at PTS, you know that thing's changing. Come on, you know, now. Basically, Earth here's did? what happened. They were like, yo, we want some... We want Guardians back. Warriors playing support Warriors. <laughs> Literally board. everywhere. Nerf Warriors. And then like, yo, crap, we destroyed Warriors. Eh, yeah. Just give them an item. <laughs> eh, so they can go everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. And they added the new enchanted buckler That's system the where they moved the uh, runic shield, shield of growth over there. Yeah, yeah about that. Around about shield. that. Like, about that. So, so, so certain people in the scene have been talking about... Uh, how this item removes Hydra's? Mm. It's very similar, Ooh. but Wait, Hydra's... Hydra's Lament? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so no, it Hydra's... Doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, they're very similar, and it will replace... It will replace Hydra's Lament on gods that you wanted to buy Hydra's Lament on, but it just didn't make sense, so you didn't buy it anyway. So yeah, like really a Hercules. Exactly. Like, with Hercules, you're like, man, Hydra's would be dope, but it's so stupid. Because the, yeah. the, the gods that Hydra's works on, because of the passive, will still Loki. Work. Loki. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Naja. Naja. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, it's basically Loki, Naja, and Tyr. Like, those are the three gods that Hydra's works on. Okay. And that's it. Um, because, uh, you know, without going into, like, crazy sabermetrics and stuff, it's basically... Uh, sabermetrics! Numbers! Yeah! Did you, did you, <laughs> did you almost kill them with your combo? Yeah. Mm. Hit them once. Bam. You know, Hydra's. Hooray. Malice sort of fills the same role, but whatever. Anyway, it does totally remove shield. Why <laughs> the hell would you build shield if you could get CDR as well? Like why? Yeah. Did you please, so so that's gonna be pretty good. Shield has always been bad. Well, no. What is it? Runic shield, the magic one. Yes. It gives you uh, magic pen magic protection. Okay, the other that one. Is, regrowth has always been bad. <laughs> yes, agree. Shield of, runic shield is the most magical protection in the entire game. I just landed some numbers. It is the most magical protection in the I'm entire watch game. That Nobody buys it. Numbers. Where's Kret? And I have Where's no Kret? Idea Where's Kret to crunch the numbers? Where's Kretz, of course, Kret, Kret, Kret's busy losing with Juice Gaming. Actually, they're probably winning. Yeah, what happened with that game. tournament? Is that over? Uh, it was going on when we started live, so I don't uh, know if it's going on. Okay. But, um, you can't see on their website any of the tournament yeah. stats or the brackets right now. Just want to put it out there. 
Awesome. Salt. Salt. <laughs> Salt. I'm just saying, but, uh, bro. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the um, I it, it'll be a very powerful item, and it removed shield, and shield wasn't even purchased anyway. So. Mm. All right, moving on. What we got? Uh. Shield regrowth still trash. Uh, golden dagger down a hundred gold still poop. Apollo bug, who cares? Artemis bug. Bacchus reduced chug. That is a very big deal. I'm kind of happy about that, to be honest with you, because I've been playing Bacchus more and more. I'm happy. And he is a noob killer because if you try to play Bacchus and you don't understand that. You cost a hundred and seventy to drink yeah. once, late yeah. game. <laughs> you were in a bad spot. One forty still a hell of a like it's big, but it's not as big. It's a start. Still, like, it's a start. Three it's chugs to get max. That's still ninety. You get back. Yeah, it's a start. I like it. Because yeah, Bac Bacchus is a man of horror. This is a Hercules buff. This is a what? This is a Hercules buff. Not a buff to Hercules. This is a buff the way Hercules was buffed in the sense that he's hard to right play. Back. Let's just make I'll be it right easy. back. Go for it. Right. Uh, in the <laughs> sense that, like, this is a, you know, this is this god is too hard. Let's just make him easier. The His... hard part about playing Bacchus was managing your mana. Like... For sure. I can see that from, like, a new player perspective, without a doubt. I mean, you jump on him, and you're very surprised at how much mana you go through. And oh, you're not yeah. by you're not by a meditation on this man. So I mean, come on now, like it's <laughs> yes, you definitely need to have. It's definitely you know a got not a support that I would recommend to any new players. Which is like, hey, I want to learn support. Who should I play? I'm not recommending yeah, him Bacchus at all. Yeah, Bacchus is definitely towards the top, even with the nerf uh, or yeah. even with the buff. Yep. So you know, this was a I don't know. Like there are people in chat that are saying like, oh, it was unfair. Jeff Hinlow plays Bacchus and wins a bazillion games in a row. Yeah. So it's very, very possible to play Bacchus to a high level with mm -hmm. the current mana state. It is very, very possible to manage your mana correctly in order to be able to play Bacchus at a competitive level. It mm -hmm. is definitely possible. Yep. Um, is it very hard? Yes. Should it have been changed to make it easier? I'm not in love with that idea, but I don't despise it because it wasn't completely nerfed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. Like, I think it's totally like with Janice, my buddy Hugh. Giannis. Giannis. Hugh. <laughs> my buddy Hugh. My boy Hugh. I think it's really cool that he's difficult as hell to play, and I hope they never change him because we have 43, 44 gods. Every there god, be gods every god does not need to play. be easy to play. Some yeah, gods need yeah. to be skill based yeah. versus ability based. Yeah, and is Bacchus that god? Maybe not. And at the end of the day, he will still be generally more difficult to play than the other god than the other guardians because mm. of the fact that he has to manage his mana. Okay. It just won't be. There will just be more room to play with the the the, the, the uh, margin of error will be larger mm -hmm. which i guess is okay we'll see just how large that margin of error is when it goes live but yeah um, you know we'll 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 figure that you know we'll figure that as we go on all Something right cool. we didn't talk about go for polynomicon it. nerf. yeah i did see that actually we kind of you kind of skipped over that pretty quickly so polynomicon reduced magical power contribution to your next basic attack from 85 percent down to 50 percent there's fats. Exactly. Fats! Thoughts on polynomicon changes. <laughs> Item is dumb. <laughs> Item is dumb. Yeah. I fought a Chunga yesterday, and she hit me with Polly, and I'm Hubble, and I died. <laughs> Item is dumb. It's good. You're a mage. Do abilities. Don't use autos, you stupid. <laughs> man. All right. Oh, man. I know. So, did you fats? Did you All right. Fats? Who cares? Hold this L. Hold this L. Yeah, whatever, nerd. <laughs> but so guys, we were we were down. Next thing was Fenrir. Fenrir, you now do a lot more damage when you howl at people. Yeah. He can, I feel like Fenrir From fell off for a while. Fifty to seventy. That's pretty good. That's actually really good. Yeah. That's Fenrir, good, that's good buff. Fenrir fell off. Mm -hmm. For no reason of the god, just the players. Um, and Fenrir fell off because beads. 
Bender fell off because of players playing him a certain way and not playing him a different way. Shouts to Zindern. So what does that Zindern, mean? Z what I'll, I'll explain. So Zindern and Wolfie play Fenrir. Wolfie builds full da full damage, and Zindern builds crit. They don't do the traditional how? like put defensive bruiser items on him because he <clears throat> falls off late game. Like that's not a thing with those two players, mm -hmm. and those are two of the best Fenrir players in the game. They've they've. Uh, What's it called? They've changed their game to change the game that they have to play. And so what Zindern does is late game, Brutalize will still deal bazillion damage, but it brings you into shady situations, right? Like that's the downside. That's always, you brutalize yeah. someone and you die. So what he does is he uses Brutalize to catch up with them. And then he basic attacks. Crit Fenrir, you basic. Pressing your two button will reset your basic animation, so it's basically a cancel. You basic to basic. And you crit them twice, and they have no HP because you hit them with Brutalize once. So, okay. now we see that Fenrir has cancels. Yeah. So I much. play fighting games. This is very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, I'm going to give so, super props to Zinder then. That's dope. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. like, you That's know, dope. Zin you know, Zinder and Wolfie both do the both do the cancels, and, and they build a lot differently than everyone else. So, did this buff to Fenrir have to happen? Um, no. It... Like, for the, this... the character, it didn't have to happen, but nobody knew what they were doing, so high res chose to buff it so the character would see more play. So what they did was, there's only two people who play him in a way that's effective, <laughs> and now they're allowing everybody else to play him in an effective way as well. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. Which, yeah, and like... That, that's good! Yeah. Because all they did was make Zinder more of a threat and give oh, Wolfie a reason to actually go. be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> all about the chest hair. All, All right. right. What else? Is what else we got? Isis. Now you can actually charge your circle because fire giants throwing lava everywhere. That's Ooh. actually really scary for fire giant contention. That's gonna be so deadly. Team. Oh yeah. That's really good. That's actually a really good buff. That's dope. That's big... Scylla. <laughs> Nothing really. Like who cares? Yeah. Scylla. Scylla. Uh, not so nerf silly. bat. Scylla nerf splinter. It's annoying to people who play Scylla because it'll be different, but it doesn't matter in the long run. Yeah. Duration of Sikkim has been reduced from 225, Meh. which is really big, to 175, which is still big. Yep. It's not a huge, it's not a huge it's change, I feel like. It's definitely not as big, but it's still big. Do you think it's that's big? Do you think that's where the adjustment need to be for Scylla, though? No! Why does Crush do a bazillion damage? <laughs> that is one because of the... That is... First made. Uh, that's, Speaking of Crush... That's why the His biggest. Ability now has a minimum travel time. Ooh. Which means she can't just drop it and pop it. Drop it and pop it. Oh Stop. god. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Come on. Stop lock and pop it. Come on. Do you say Do you think? Do you think we're still up? Google that. that us, Google that song, Octane. You'll know. All right, I'll get it for you. I'm Don't not, Google it, please. I'm not gonna Google it right now because then I'm gonna play but, it live so, on the stream. So I do feel like so. <laughs> Scylla has the same problem that Hebo... <clears throat> Habwa. Habwa. And... Habwa. Habwa. And Giannis. Giannis. Um, we need to do Giannis. That... <laughs> These kids. These kids, right. So Scylla, Scylla, Hebo, and Zeus all have the same problem in the sense that they are burst mages and that's totally a thing. Yeah. That it, like... It's totally fair that a, that a god can 100 to 0 you sometimes without you reacting. As long as you could like, beads or ages and make a crazy play yeah. to get out if you're super exemplary, that's fine. If their ability is to just murder you, like, Hebo can kill you in a 3-1-4 in a combo, that sucks. And it's infuriating to play against, but that's fine as long as, because Hebo has the lowest HP in the game, has no real movement outside of water carpet. And, and you can combat it with, like, an Aegis, yeah. Yeah, and, like, Loki's sort of the same thing. Like, you know, so the fact that Scylla can murder you in a crush I'm a monster combo is okay with me. I think the fact that Sikkim is AoE, has no diminishing returns because it's a cripple, or because it's a root, and does damage is stupid. If Sikkim was single target, did zero damage, 
and allowed you to beads out of it, I would be a lot more content with it. Especially since Crush already slows and steals protections, by the way. What the hell is that about? That's what I'm saying. So, I think that Sikkim should lose all of the fancy stuff and just let it root. If you want it to be unbeadsable, I'm even okay with that. As long as it does zero damage and it's single target. But the fact that late game Scylla can just sick them your entire team and like destroy them i think that's pretty silly but a lot what a lot of the complaints about is the amount of damage Scylla does and that's what she does and as infuriating as it is as as many times have i thrown my headset across the board because yeah. i've been sickened crushed and monstered and died i'm okay with that being cap possible as long as i can do something about the sickum yeah and it doesn't sick my entire freaking team and it doesn't do damage by itself like, you already got Polynomicon, bro. Mm -hmm. Let Sikkim do zero damage. Books and are damage for reading and not for throwing at people. <laughs> like, like let, let the damage from Sikkim come out of Polynomicon, just like a Bacchus drink or something like that. I, I can see that. Or, or like an Isis Silence. You see a lot of Isis players using the Silence as a Polynomicon ability. I think that's totally fine. If that still is a burst mage, I just, I think Sikkim is a little too strong. So. Okay. Sikkim is the Brahm on the kid. Yep. Hades got hit, though. Hades is no longer the master of level 2. <laughs> Hades was a level 2 god. Hades was legitimately a level 2 god, which meant if you were in a bad spot at level 2, you were dead. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, he was definitely yeah. strong early on. Well, I can just agree. don't stand in the wave. But... Yeah. No, no, but like some people have to, and then it's just like, I play Bakasura, okay? What do I do? Don't die! Play <laughs> I die! Don't play box. Now, uh, Blighted Detonation does 50% of the damage to enemy gods, but full damage to creep still, so it's no longer a million billion to everybody around him. Hercules! Get a new picture for his passive. Yay! It's probably something with his ugly face. Kumakarna! Like we said earlier, <laughs> the uh, Mez is no longer 20 years, it's now 19 years and 11 months. Mercury! <laughs> He will no longer run forever in assault because who plays that game mode? Uh, Vulcan, magma bomb, shoot the three. It's updated particles. Branching bullet is now magma deactivated bomb. when you get CC'd on Shivalonke. So magma that's cool. Bomb. You have to recast it. Detonate slow has been upped from 30 to 40, and that's the patch notes. Play ROM. F dot. So let's talk about. No, it. you're supposed to do the rolling thing. You. <laughs> what are you talking about? He says play ROM. He's waiting for your singing. It's the only time. Three. It's the only time he's gonna ask you to break it out, bro. What only time. All right, you know you're the worst troll. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate but, you. So so let's let's talk about a little bit about Hades. Wow, really? Um, yeah, because I've since they changed Hades recently to give him options. Yeah. Where his where his two puts on blight. I've really liked the idea of Hades support. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, USA! 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 This kid just feeds the chat. All he does is feed the chat. No, <laughs> USA! USA! I, I'm hearing my neighborhood light up. Uh, yeah, is there we, a uh, it's, it's 2 1 right now. <clears throat> USA versus Portugal. I gotta, bring, I gotta bring up my uh, ESPN draft. Gotta see where I'm at. Pretty sure I picked uh, USA today. Go for it. Keep going. Um, but so, I've always liked the idea of Hades support, but it's still not great. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's somewhat viable, I suppose. So, um, and, and my, my thing with Hades is the fear, it's, it's broken. It's so strong. Pillar of Agony, if you don't use it... Pillar of Agony? <laughs> Sorry, right, keep Pillar going. Actually, it is Pillar of Agni. You ever get Pillar of Agni while you get Agni bombed? Yeah, Pillar of Agni. Uh, no, I because I bomb. get out of the circle of purple poop. Because United you... States, Portugal, one one right now. Just putting it out there. They just no. Got... Yeah, it's uh, a... is it because... two one? It hasn't updated yeah, for me yet. Then that's okay. why the chat is sitting there saying USA. That's why he's chanting USA. <sighs> it hasn't updated for me. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, 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 anyway. Back to so, sleep. like, the reason you get out of the. The purple stuff is because that guy stuff? altered the way he wanted to. Yeah. Do you remember when? Do you remember when? Um, what's it called? Do you remember when Anatoly played Hades? Uh, that was a while ago. Uh, in the 1940s. 
when Hades I think first came out. Four. I think it was week four and he did really well. Okay. Yeah, I think we talked about that. We were really surprised well. with the Hades yeah. pick. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we talked about that and we dissected it. And without going, you know, we, we, we've got 20 minutes left here. So without going totally in depth, um, basically he ulted every time he didn't want to ult. Like, when, you, when you're Hades and you see everybody grouped up, on, like, where, you're like, oh, I'm going to ult right here. And then you just get turned on, focused, and yep. dead. Yep. Where everybody feeds out and runs, right? So what happens is you got to wait till much later into the team fight. Every time Tolly Hades ult, every time he used his Hades ult in that game, it was like 20 minutes after you wanted it to happen. You sat there and you're like, this is the perfect time to Hades ult. Fantastic. It's going to go down. Why didn't you do it? What the hell? And then, it, and then like, the enemy team is, like, waiting for the Hades ult to blow their beads. And then it doesn't come, so they use it on something else. And then you're stuck in the pillar of agony. Yeah. And you're dying. Yeah. And you're like, damn it, it's Hades. Why am I dying to Hades? <laughs> what the hell? You know? So. Do you think Hades needs better classification at this point? Like, I feel like he's just kind of like, I don't know. He... he... Hades was a mage. Hades was a mage until the change to the two. Yeah. I just, um, I yeah, I just feel like he needs a little bit better classification, and you know, people what do you just mean? expand. Uh, by that, by, by that, what I mean is, as you said, he was a mage. You know, is he a mage? Is he a guardian? And I just feel like he has attributes of both, which make him viable. But as we talked about, like, there's always a better support that's available. So I don't. I feel like Hades is kind of. I don't know, kind of in limbo right now, to be honest with you. Right. Like, he doesn't really have his set place where it's like, Koopa Karna. Okay, Koopa Karna is, is, a, is a, a support, a guardian. Without a doubt, you know, we always know what he's going to be. You know, same thing with Apollo. He's always going to be a hunter. You know, I, just, I just feel like the issue with Hades is not necessarily, you know, what's been, what the adjustments that's been going on now. I feel like the issue with Hades is just giving him a classification and sticking with it and then tweaking him to be better at that role. Well, because I hate the fact where it's like, we don't know, Hades isn't good here, Hades isn't good here, so we're just going to put him in the middle and hope that people play him to the best of the ability. Well, so, I don't like the idea of classification. I, think I love that, it. I think that a company telling you where to play a god is complete ass. <laughs> but then look I at the fact that stupid. they don't allow you, like, if you're physical, you can't buy magical items. They do it right off the back. Bring that back! I'm yep, trying to play I agree. some... some Magical. That doesn't make any sense. I'm done. That's so <laughs> that that was changed because of the way because of the way the game was. Uh, once upon a time, guys, if you're unaware, yeah. basic attacks were always physical. 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 Yep. Um. So the, you could be a Freya and start to leave it up to the player to you purchase. Start. Oh my god. Leave it up yeah. to the player to purchase any item they want and build any way they want. Why does well, it have to be directed? Why? I don't hate. I, I really hated it when it first came out. I don't hate it now. Okay. I'm not in love with it, but it's not something like I. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna burn the barn because they don't let me buy an item that does zero from my character. It's not game breaking, but I still yeah. would love to have it back exactly. to the way it was like, because like I it's, think it's cool yeah. to punish noobs because they're stupid <laughs> and like watch Sobek build attack damage. Like go for <laughs> it. No, let you're, me. Like like you're an idiot, but go for it. Like <gasps> rude. You know, I, like, I'm okay with noobs not being demolished because they built, you know, chins. Like, I'm okay. Why with do you that. have to can classify you, it to noobs, though? Can you why imagine, can't you just go have some fun with it? Like, why can't can you can't imagine you Hunter Kumbakarna? I wonder. Yeah, and so, and I wonder so if they, paper, map, paper map brings up my second high. point, All which right. was, which is where I was going, which is by <laughs> limiting the items yeah. to magical and physical specific with having attack speed in the middle. Um you have more leeway on how to design your gods because you don't have to think about intricate, broken-ass combos. If Nuwa could use items like Executioner, rip. Yeah, but... <laughs> like, I don't know. Part like, of me is like, so be it. Let it develop. I mean... Uh... No, because th you break your game. Then you... Right. Could, what happens is... You what happens is, break So, the like, <laughs> the idea is if, 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 if those items, if, if physical items could be purchase, purchased on mages, okay. Nuwa wouldn't exist chronos wouldn't exist because you can't develop an a you can't develop an adc you can't develop a hunter mage a basic attack mage and allow them to use the same itemizations as hunters because then they're just better there's no point in using hunters because so it, the yeah. mage hunters 
Especially one that gets his, all his health back. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it, way better. So it breaks okay. the game, and it actually limits the creativity of God design. So when it first happened, I was in your camp. But as we saw new gods come out and, and new ideas and mm -hmm. new waz come out. Stop. Uh, <laughs> Alright, it's my update and <laughs> it allows talk more, it allows more creativity. So, I, you know, that that's you know, that's what that is. But as far as uh as far as like telling you where to put a god, I really I hate that. Classification okay. is something that we talked to Wolfie about a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, and and um you know, I, I, I think it's the same conversation as there is like, you know, when it comes to classifications, all classifications really have to do is dictate uh, starting stats. But then again, it's kind of stupid uh, because it's just stupid in the sense that, like, Freya the only re the only like reason I like it on on Hades is it allows high res then to have a focus on the way they balance the god and the direction they go with it. That's the only reason I like it. I feel like with Hades, he's always just up in limbo. Like, eh, kind of put him right in between. Limbo. The best. Limbo. Oh, okay. Because he's a... Uh... Well, right now, well, before the change to the two, Hades was, Hades was just a mage. Despite yep. his guardian yeah. tag, he was just a mage. Yep. Which I yep. think is cool because that's meta-based. Hades could play guardian. He could be support Hades. There were just better picks because yep. of the meta. Mm -hmm. And he happened to do a lot of damage if you built damage, so that's pretty sweet. Freya is a mage. You play her as an assassin. Yeah, it's true. Oh, <laughs> did you guys know that? Wait, no. High res, make her an assassin. This is wrong, man. <laughs> you can't look. Nemesis is not a warrior. She's an assassin. It's... Somebody is a little upset about I that. It. I hate it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just don't I think classifications it. do much. I, I don't really like them. All right. I, you know, All right. It, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's sort of like t dictating where a player can play a god <laughs> limits the creativity that you can do. Um, I think it's a lot of fun to find the next big jungler, the next big solo laner. Yeah. Like, you know, shouts to Lionheart, world's first Hebo jungle. <laughs> like, Hebo jungle. Oh, God. Works, because you 3-1-4 the lane and they die. Yeah. Like, it's really cool playing things out of position, and when it works, it's cool. Um, so I, I like that leeway. It allows player creativity a little bit more. So classifications are, are, are a little lame. What else we got? Anything else we got for the patch? Any last comments on the patch? And this is released when? Wednesday? Is that what I'm understanding? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It might be Monday. They're changing some things because of uh, PTS. apparently Rom being able to use his <laughs> one in conjunction with Golden Bow was ridiculous. Yeah. Because he could lane clear in two shots. Yep. Uh, I was cool with that. I like that. <laughs> I don't have to use Mana and I can just shoot twice and, you know, win the lane. GG. All right, cool. No, also, wait, no. wait. Before, before everything ends, go, go for it. Shoutouts to the new ROM meta that's coming. Blue on your supports. Free poke for days. <laughs> I have back, always been Kong. team blue on your supports. Yo, ROM Kumbakarna. Can you imagine how hilarious that looks? I have always been team blue on your support. I've always been team blue. I know, blue. Odin. I know. <laughs> hey, Odin is the exception to the rule in all series is competitive. Was Odin before he deserves died. Blue was before he died. He didn't jump. He Rip did not Odin. Die. Rip Guan Yu. Please fix Arena. Rip Guan. Odin is still Odin is still a good Rip niche Odin. support pick. You are a great father, and your children shall miss you, Odin. Rip in peace. All Odin right. Is still a good pick. You just got to be more careful. So that's. Before we before we wrap up, can we just uh, like discuss upcoming tw um, community events? Sure, go for it. What do you got? Just everything. We okay. always bring up the Wednesday pugs, but we don't really bring up. Anything All right, else. sure, sure. So just ones off the top of your head. Um, right off the top of your head. Central stuff. Yeah, so we have so so we have um, Tuesday's we have the... battle for Valhalla from Smite Central, so five v five. Wednesday, you also have the EU three v three and also the NA three v three. That is available yep. for Smite Central. Now, who else do we have there going Monday, on? Monday, you have the 4v4 Siege. Yep, 4v4 Smite Siege. Central again. Is that Juice Gaming? Is that Juice Gaming? <sighs> what is that Smite Central? No, I think... What is this for? Oh, yeah, that's right. Are they running it's, one, too? Who puts on the Siege me, tournament, Fats? You're trolling me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Who puts it's on the Siege It's Smite Central. Central. Smite Central. I don't know these things, dude. Yeah, Smite Central. I show up on Wednesdays and yell about 3v3. That's what I do. Uh, okay, well, I wish I could do that. 
All right, so so on, no comment. So on Mondays, no have, comment. So on Mondays we have four v four siege. Yep. On Tuesdays, Smite Central does five v five battle for Valhalla. Yeah. On Wednesdays, Smite Central does three v three both NA and EU. On Fridays, you have EGL, which Hindu Man is a part yeah, of. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. So Hindu Man does EGL, which is essentially basically how it goes down is three v three is done by Smite Central, both NA and EU. Uh, Tuesday or Tuesday is an NA five v five tournament that's not high res weekly. That's put on by Smite Central. And Friday is an EU 5v5 that's not put on by Hi-Res Weekly, and that's EGL. Also, and I, I think uh, Thursday is an NA 2v2 hosted by uh, Blake. Yeah, he's okay, doing right? that now. Bloody Tech's doing a 3 versus 3 now, too. I don't know what channel that, or like the details or what day that's on, but I know Bloody yeah, Tech does a 3 versus 3. Yeah, but apparently now uh, 2v2s you know what? Uh, Tuesdays. You know what, you? I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to say to all this, and I recommended it a while ago? High res mm -hmm. just needs to put on their website a community tournament calendar on their website, not on a Google Doc. And the reason I say that is because, like, as I said before, come from StarCraft 2 scene, Team Liquid ended up putting up a calendar where people could submit things to. Somebody filtered through it and allowed it, permitted it. Who put, who put I want to see it. Who put that up? Team Liquid. Exactly, that's my entire point. It's not no. high res's high res responsibility. If they're going to go ahead and continue to run the largest tournament in the scene and continue to be so involved with every aspect of the game and community, it's not going to be a bad thing. It's going to be a good thing for them to go ahead and run a community calendar that has all these esports items but on so, it. So what... Just saying. But then what happens is you can create a problem which is sort of the same problem that Twitch has in the sense that only the good guys get noticed. Or, scratch that, only the big guys get noticed. No, so, you can have filters on your calendar that has community tournaments, high-res, partnered or sponsored tournaments. You can have charity events. You can have filters on your calendar. You could fill yeah, it. That's the thing is, I will say once again, like, there's nowhere out there right now where I can go ahead and almost like a TV guide say, okay, what's going on in my Smite community no, on you're, Monday? You're totally right. There's not. But if, if Alexandro X28 has mm -hmm. a tournament, yeah. does Hi-Res put that on, 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 their, on their site? Why not? Three people show up. Why not? Is Hi-Res going to put that on their site? Why not? Why not? How's it going to hurt? Because How's it going to hurt? Because from how's it going to hurt from a marketing standpoint? It doesn't mean they're they're all they're doing is listing it to make it available for viewers and players. It hurts. It it, it it's like marketing one hundred and two. It hurts your brand. It hurts your. It hurts how well your game is perceived by the outside mm -hmm. source. If you list something on your official website, I click on it. Mm -hmm. it like if a new game came out and mm -hmm. they listed the tournament on their website and I clicked on it and there were mm -hmm. six viewers. Mm -hmm. I would say this game is ass. Nobody plays it. So what do you throw sure. it over to Tier Monster or somebody like that that does yeah. it? Just somebody needs to do it. To be honest yeah. with you, I, and I completely and agree. Don't go, and and it has to be on a high traffic website. It has to be on yeah. high. Don't don't go ahead and create a Google Doc and then be like, here people, check it out. Like it needs to be on a high traffic website that people can see it every time. I mean, I think it's a great idea. I want to see it. I want to I want to be able to go on and be like, okay, it's Monday night. What's going on in Smite? And be able to go to a calendar and see. 30 things going on. And one of them could be last is streaming. That's fine. That's fine. At least it's advertised there. And, you know, this charity event's going on. And this tournament's going on. And this fundraiser's going on. Like, put it up there. Put it up there. It's not going to hurt. But we don't need to dwell on a ton. But either way, there needs to be a spot so that people like us aren't sitting here trying to name stuff off the top of our heads. And that it's completely organized. And granted, there was one that Kelly was running for a little while that was a Google Doc. Yeah, and it was okay. It was fine. But it wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't well-maintained, I guess. Because to me, it should be submitted to. You just to want a little more presentation. Yep. I totally feel you yep. on that. Yep. Like, going to a Google Doc seems very, like, wow, you, wow, your like, Wow, your scene's developed. Give me a Google Doc to see what's going on. Awesome. Yeah, like I, you yeah. know, I totally get your beef with the Google Doc, and I, I have a similar, you know, I just, I just don't think it's high res responsibility to really do anything like that. So, Portugal tied it up two two. All right, anyways, moving on. Um, USA. Let's go ahead and close out the show here, um, guys. That'll go ahead and do it for today's show uh, of the Smite Update. Check out all of our previous shows down below at YouTube.com/slash The Smite Update. Uh, the Smite update goes back to before open beta, just to give you guys an idea of how long the show's been going on. Uh, shout outs to everyone who's given us five-star reviews on the iTunes store. 
Those of you guys that haven't yet and listened to it on the audio only version, please go out there and do it. It definitely helps out the show, gives us more viewership, puts us at the top when people are looking for mobile video games or even Smite, uh, without a doubt. Um, thank, shout outs to High Res Studios for hosting this on their Twitch channel. They don't have to do it, but they enjoy it just as much as you guys do. And so shout outs to High Res. Uh, every, we, we go ahead and stream every week on twitch.tv slash smite game at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And uh, F. Dot, where can people check you out? Uh, people can find me at Twitter and Twitch, well, twitch.tv slash F swag and twitter.com slash F. Dot NY. Um, you, you can find me, like, I, I tweet a lot, especially on the weekends, and I stream almost every day. I try mm -hmm. to stream every single weekday. Weekends, I usually have stuff going on because I'm honestly like esports nerding out watching the tournaments. <laughs> I also stream during the mornings on Tier Monster. Twitch.tv slash Tier Monster. Uh, you can find me there every morning, 7 to 10 a.m. We call it first period, kind of just hang out, drink my coffee. We talk Smite Sports and everything in between. Uh, and these days, Tier Monster has a cool promotion going on. Um, Tier Monster Woo! Ward Skins. Yeah. So if you guys have seen those really dope, sweet, cool of fragilistic green eyeball wards that are only found from tier monster and the only way to get them is by the only way to get tier monster wards is by watching tier monster and winning the raffle so very weird very uh cool stuff coming out from tier monster and i'm part of it so come see that and also yeah uh smart central 3v3 i cast that on it says Wednesdays over here. Wednesdays, <laughs> Wednesdays. I, I legit like have a calendar. Yeah. Um, I just write it on my whiteboard. Like a real professional. There that, you go. That's like what I do. But um. So yeah. The Smite. So I got Tier Monster in the mornings. My personal channel, and then Smite Central. I do three v threes, and I also host a show called Ban Zeus. Ooh. It's me, Cret, and a guest. Um. And we do that weekly every Wednesday at five o'clock, or every Tuesday at five o'clock, right before Battle to Valhalla. Um. Me and Kret host a talk show, Banzu, so find me personal channel, Tier Monster, Twitter, and Smite Central. I'll put that all in chat. Sweet! Just Google my name and you'll find me. Oh, yeah. snap. Fats, that's it? That's all you're putting out there? Google XFats. Alright. Alright. XFats, Twitter, XFats, Twitch, find me here on Smite Game, Monday through Friday. Oh, no, excuse me, Tuesday through Friday, 10 p.m., 1 a.m. EST. I stream, I play Smite, I'm an idiot, we make dumb jokes, we laugh, all that <laughs> stuff. Follow me on my personal channel, I swear, the end. Excellent. Uh, for me, guys, you can check me out, twitch.tv slash OctanePro, S-C-I-I. -I. Same thing for Twitter, same thing for YouTube, outside, of course, of the YouTube.com slash The Smite update. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's going to go ahead and round things out for today, folks. We'll see you guys next week at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern on Sunday just like you guys do every Sunday after the EU tournament. And stay tuned in just under about 10 minutes. Uh, myself and my new co-host, FG3000, will be going ahead and giving you guys the Smite Talk show. The show's been on a hiatus for a while now, but we're going to bring it back for a little bit here. So check it out. Uh, stay mm -hmm. tuned. It'll be in about 10 minutes. We will see you guys then. Take care, everybody.